Right. Aw. <laughs> that's how that's how we're starting this right there with yeah. with you doing ah. Uh. The, um, the, the downside of that. Well, I, never mind. We'll talk about that when you're filming and when you're rolling. All right. You ready? Good. We're good. Okay. I just gotta. You gotta remind me about. Every 20 minutes or so, that's going to cut off. So I'm going to constantly keep looking at the camera. What, the is there dot. a light that shuts off? There's a there's a red dot. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, okay. it's hard to see. There's a red dot in the corner, and it will tell me after 20 oh, minutes. Oh, I see it on the top right? Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm going to have to do that. Oh, you know what? Before we start, let me put my phone on vibrate. I, you know, it's funny. as When I watched the pod, or my first podcast with you, second time through, I, could, I kept hearing my phone buzz. And then <laughs> a few seconds after that, I'm looking down. You can tell because it was on the table, yeah. right on the other side. That was window. like, what was that? That was like the first month of COVID. Yeah. It was. Yeah. That was immediately after Con X. Yep. And when things, when things, when they finally shut us all down. Yeah. All right. So. Let me intro this bad boy. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Shoot the Shit podcast. I am here. For, actually, this is the first. I'm here with Scott Dieterman. You guys see him on the channel. I'm a little lost to words right now because this is like the first in-person guest that I've had in over a year. And you have the, the pleasure of being that first person. All because of this damn pandemic. But thanks. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be back on your show again. Uh, you know, the, it, it, the timing couldn't be perfect for this show. <laughs> As you know, uh, we had the Slider team on the podcast in the last month. Um, and that was a lot of fun, uh, at least in my eyes, because I didn't know too much about the event uh, other than the one year I went. Uh, but what's funny is what connects all of the pieces of the puzzle together is you. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm the one that connects all the pieces to the puzzle. Well, you know, okay, like the- let me rephrase that then. Did I did <laughs> you, I kind of help get it arranged? Yes. Yes. 100%. Yes. You were you and Creep were the ones that are the reason why we did that. Um, but I'm talking about more like everyone in that group obviously knows who you are, and it's safe to say you were pretty much their boss, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I guess for lack of a better term, I'm their manager. The manager uh, on streets. Uh, Looney touched on that a little bit. Right. Um, she was pretty spot on as far as what I actually cover. Um, it's. I cover all of all of streets. Right. Uh, obviously, there's a heavy focus on the slider team because that's where my expertise lies as, as far as when it comes to if you break down scare tactics. Right. So um, I was brought on for that um, to kind of get them going some more. Uh, I guess they had had problems in the past and try to get everything dialed in. So I did that, and then also because I'm out there all the time, I have all the other talent. Um, the street as well the street. and and actually the the stage show people right they technically uh, fall under my uh, supervision but they're all self-sufficient self-reliant they have their schedule they do their things take their breaks and that's so you already kind of know with yeah. how that rolls and everything yeah first off uh the podcast i think in my eyes went great the first I, one or with them all of the them team? oh yeah in I've, general i've seen i've seen all the teams like all the, the pairs that that uh, creep set up, right? And they were all great, you know. I mean, it was kind of weird because some didn't talk much, right? Freak, um, <laughs> and and some some talked quite a bit. Yawn. <laughs> yeah, I just called both you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> the one podcast. Where <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I mean, I, I had a lot of fun getting to know these people. Um, I I now like now when I'm putting you know, makeup to faces and stuff like that. I mean, I remember seeing a lot of them the first year that I went. Um, and a lot of them I saw do a lot of weird shit. Um, but I think that was the fun part of it for me, at least. I like mean, them doing weird shit at the event. Yeah. yeah that's a given. Yeah. That is definitely. It was fun though. I mean, I, I think, like I said on all the podcasts, I think that what drives this event different from others is they have more freedom to get into that character and interact with the people rather than you see it like knots or something. You know what I mean? So, I can say that they do have um, quite a bit of creative uh, freedoms, right. liberties. Uh, it, it, it goes with, you know, you have to stay within the range right. of what's allowed. If they're ever, you know, if they're ever in doubt, they come and ask me. I always tell them, hey, if you're in doubt, don't do it, or you come and ask me first. Right. And 
that's usually the safe bet. Sometimes they don't, and it's something they weren't supposed to do, and right. you know they get a verbal lashing after that, and then <laughs> you know they're good to go. And then uh, slider practice comes around, and they have all hell to pay, right? Uh, well, you know, the thing is, is, it's funny that you mentioned that because I just messaged the group today because they had mentioned probably about a week ago, a week and a half ago, that they wanted to start getting back into the trading group. again. Yeah. And um, the thing is, is that, I mean, as the majority of them said in their, individ- in their group podcast, is that what I brought to the table with them, for them, it actually increased their ability levels and their conditioning and everything for them to be have more energy through the course of the run. Right. Now... That the stuff I did with them to get ready for 2019, that was only scratching the surface. Right. With this downtime that I've had, I've been actually able to experiment and research different things that I'm I'm going to be implementing for them and into my business. Right. As far as the cross training aspect and then going into sliding, um, and they're all everything I've I've picked up is you know when I research stuff I test it myself first and it all focuses on the muscle groups that you need. For sliding to, again, always help reduce injury. Always. You know, right. That's the key thing. I think a lot of people who don't know you, I mean, there's a lot of people in the, in the industry that I, when I mention your name, people know who you are. But the people who don't know you in the, in the industry, I mean, this guy is one of the OGs of, of freaking sliding at knots, man. Like, this guy paved, one, he's one of the people that paved the way for sliding to now go globally. How shocked are you by that, by the way? Sliding has made it to Japan. It's made it to Germany. Like, did you ever expect that when you guys started that back in the day? Not really, but when you see, you know, when you see videos of guys sliding in Japan, and this was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Right. Like, in my earlier years of being ghost town. Right. And it was, uh, it was crazy. You know, I, like, I, you know, I... I wish I could find the clip. I spent probably three hours one day after our first podcast that trying to find it, and I couldn't. I figured out anything, you know, you know, haunt sliders in Japan. I couldn't find anything. Right. You know, I could be missing something, but I couldn't find anything online, YouTube, nothing. But to see that, mind you, they were in the infant stages, but to see that something, you know, we brought to fruition here mm-hmm. to go, you know, on the other side of the world is amazing. Seriously, the you know? theme park's right up the f- freaking freeway, man. So yeah, it's like, you know, it, this is an event yeah. that really, rev- I think, in my opinion, helped revolutionize the way scaring has become today. Honestly, I, I, I would agree with that. It's definitely an additional tool, right? Um, but again, it's always secondary to character development. Oh, definitely, it enhances your character, but it should be. One of multiple things in your bag of tricks. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think, because uh, we've had this conversation before, I don't think that's something you should rely on. Correct. As far as a scare. Yeah. I think it's just something to have in your arsenal that you can play with, mm-hmm. but not rely on. Like, yeah. I, like you said, character development is a big thing when coming to haunts, because the one thing people are going to say when they leave is, remember that guy who dressed like this and yeah. who said this and, and who really had brought the story to life? Like, when I went to... Uh, like example, Dark Harbor and Knotts. When I went to their events in 2019, it was, you know, obviously Knotts was doing the whole origin storyline. So like every character around there and and a lot of the storyline had to do with that story. When I went to Dark Harbor, obviously the the story is revolutionized around the boat. Yeah. So you you see a lot of the characters kind of relating to the boat. Also too, with which, which, which you know when you came to visit us is that the majority of the street talent were clowns. Right. Now, that's a lot of that was based around the circus maze type of thing. Right. Um, I didn't really realize that until I'm like, oh, well, that's a clown maze and clowns are out here. So they had everything that kind of, not, not so much the circus, but I guess you could say, well, the circus in the sense of freak shows and, and right. stuff like that. So all these different things that caused a little bit of a, I guess you could say, a, a, defi- a definement between all the real history of the boat and the characters there and what's on the actual footprint right outside uh, either way i think the event's great oh you know, i i um, i think it's uh, it, i went for the first time and and shout out to queen mary if you're watching this i mean you guys were super nice to invite us out to to your media night and i'll never forget that that was like the first major media event i've ever went to but we went man and that was the first time for me going i had a ball i i i mean i drink 
responsibly, which everyone should. Um, and Sam falls asleep on benches. And Sam falls asleep on benches. <laughs> that is one event I have not taken him to yet. I, I, I want to take him bad. Wait, he didn't go to that one? Oh, he didn't go to the first one. He, he didn't go to the bad. first one because he got really sick the That's media right. night. And he couldn't we make had this it. this conversation. Yeah, and uh, he got really sick, and he was so bummed to miss it. Yeah. So uh, the plan is if there's a haunt season for 2021, uh, we're going to bring him down after everything opens so we can hit Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At least a haunt every day. Yeah. All the, all the major majority ones. So it'd be uh, Queen, Knott's, uh, Hayride, and um, Universal. Universal. Yeah. So he would hit those. Magic four. Mountain would be a good one for you to check out, too. It's, it's I definitely want to go. It's a bit far. But yeah. And the reason why I didn't put that on the list for him coming down is because he's only limited to so many days. Yeah. So I would want him to hit at least the, 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 you know, the ones in the Los Angeles, Orange County area, yeah. Long Beach, the ones closer to us. Rather than if he were to come down another weekend, then hell yeah, let's go to Six Flags. Yeah. I think that's on my agenda for this year, for sure. I really want to hit Six Flags. Uh, yeah. The guys, uh, the sliders are always talking about how um, awesome their team was over there and um, yeah. how much work they put into it. So I, I def that's something on my list I definitely want to check out. Yeah, it's, I mean, my first year at Dark Harbor, um, we got comped everything. It was, you know how they do that. It's basically right. help each other out. So... We had, uh, I think, one, it was like a limo bus type of thing. One one of those loaded up, and they trekked us all out there, and we hung out the whole night and checked out all the events, and then we trekked all the way back. That's cool. Man. So, you know, it was a good time, though. You know, everybody's partying. And there was, there was two <laughs> poles inside the bus, too. Great. So everybody was partying in there and, you know, having a couple of beverages. It was, it was a good time. Good time, right? You know, it was a really good time. Let's talk about these podcasts, man. I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. The reason why you're one of the reasons why you're here is so we could talk. I want to hear what you about thought about those croonies. About them all, man. Uh, well, first of all, before we get into that, before I forget, just a little bit of correction on the year I started at uh, Dark Harbor. Right. I know on my initial podcast with you, I said 2017, and Looney actually said 2017. That's actually incorrect. I actually lived in Boston. 2017. The year of 2017, and funny thing is, is when I moved out there, I was actually trying to get a job uh, at uh, Canopy Lake Park okay. over there for their haunt, right? Overseeing their largest street zone, right? And their talent, and timing was off, right? I had like it was almost a two-hour interview with the guys over there, and the guy was explaining to me, you know, we really don't just bring somebody in from the outside, right? Uh, to for this kind of position, but with the experience you have, you're definitely a candidate. And at the time, I was still looking for other jobs, too, because I wasn't sure what was going to happen with them. Right. Three weeks later, he calls me back, and I'm driving on my way to my first day of the new job. <laughs> so I had to decline it. Damn. I was bummed. You know, and that, hindsight, yeah. which, you know, it was kind of, I mean, the job didn't work out well. I actually get, got injured. Right. And, and left, and I ended up coming back. But I was kind of bummed because I – Interviewed for the position I wanted, and right. I got it, and then I couldn't, I couldn't get it. Look at my roommate right there. She's, she's watching us right now. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, it's, it, it, that, I think that's one of my goals, too. I mean, you mentioned, now you're mentioning out-of-state haunts. It's like, I They're really, in New Hampshire, by the way. New Hampshire? Like, yeah. I want to I check out not only different states. Obviously, I think the first one I'd ever go to, haunt-wise, would be in Orlando um, to check out Horn Nights, yeah. uh, Bush Gardens, uh, Hello Scream. By the way, did you know we're getting a hollow scream down here at SeaWorld? Yeah, I saw that. Is it confirmed? It's confirmed. It's confirmed. They're already going to be starting construction pretty soon, actually. Wow. So they're going full force into this. That That's cool. It'll be it'll be good to have something. I mean, yeah, it's two hours away from us, hour and a half away. Right. But if nothing here opens up, they're going to get an influx, oh, yeah, I think, because people are going to want to go down there, whether they get a hotel, spend the night, which I think a lot of people would if they do that because I know I would honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's a long trek. Yeah, yeah I'm if I'm going, I'm going, I'm leaving like Friday night. I'll hit the event Saturday night and then kind of chill Sunday and then come back Sunday evening. Yeah. So, it's like a whole weekend, you know what yeah. I mean? So, I'm excited for that. I mean, Hello Scream, I've heard good things about it. Yeah. They have one out in uh Williamsburg and then they have one out in uh Tampa. At their other Parks. Yeah, yeah, at um, Bush Gardens. Yeah, so I'm excited for that, and then hopefully we get the resurgence of Dark Horizon because I do want to check that out. Yeah, and it's funny that we, you brought up Hollow Scream. And I was like, about two days after I saw the posting, which I, I wasn't sure it was confirmed yet. I was thinking, oh, maybe I should go down there and interview, check it out with them. But it doesn't. In, in this scenario, it doesn't make sense because I'm you know an hour and a half, two hours away. Yeah. So the only way it would make sense is if. 
Maybe you knew somebody, or if you knew somebody out there, yeah, spend the night crashing or the couch I, I the was weekend. Put up, I was put up by them somewhere. Yeah, at, a ho- at one of their hotels. Yeah, which um, would be awesome. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> SeaWorld. This guy's the good, good for the job right here, man. Um, what did you think of these podcasts, man? Talk to me. Okay, I, 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 I took notes. Took notes. Like, you thankfully, took thankfully notes. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait a week for every single one. I got all of them before. Yeah, the first one he got started. he got exclusive media sneak pre yeah. sneak peek. Hit the. Um, hit the docket but you know i just got i just pulled up a couple of notes on uh not even a couple notes just one note on each person and you know just to kind of cover things is this gonna be uh, do you watch the office yeah, have you seen well, it? i did, <laughs> did, did is this gonna be like something where michael scott comes back in and just goes boom roasted <laughs> uh well maybe for justin no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh, out no. of all people justin that'd be hilarious yeah actually for for um ash and and Hunter, it's. I only have one note on this one. It's funny because everybody calls Ashley Cherry. Right. Right. And it, it, this is a tough one for me because she reminded me so much of a close friend of mine that passed away that I worked with at Haunt. Okay. And her name was Squirt. Right. So I called, I decided to call Ashley Squirt. I mean, I still call her Cherry, but to me, she's Squirt because Squirt. she reminds me so much. She's even the same height. As maybe maybe an inch or two shorter, but they were both short girls, super you know bubbly with personality and right. and whatnot. Um, so that was you know it's kind of a. I mean, I think she. I can't even remember how long it's been now since she passed away. I would say, geez, probably coming up on maybe ten years now. Damn. So it was a tough one. She was she died at, you know before she was thirty. Of, wow. Of a form of cancer. Wow. And um, it was. It, a tough that was a tough one for me she's in a better place now man yeah. she's not suffering no more that's all that matters but you know to the end like i would go and visit her in the hospital every right. couple of days and one day i just checked in with her by by text mm-hmm. said hey how you doing i'm not gonna make it in today and she's like oh i'm doing great yada 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 and then she decides to go down the route that she normally does she's like you know i gotta tell you something oh. she's like today I was able to take a shit and it was fucking glorious. And I, I, I just about fell out of my chair. I was laughing so hard. But at the same time, that's, that's who she was. Yeah. You know, she was very no-nonsense, a total sweetheart. She wasn't letting anything stop her from having a good time. Exactly. That's all, that's all that matters right there. All right. Let's see. Let's hear some of these notes, man. I, this, is, this is honestly something I've been record, want, wanting to record and waiting to record. I was like, I, I told, don't know why. I told the guy. You're always so excited when we got I, something coming up. I, I, because it. Scott, you're just a cool <laughs> motherfucker. That's why. Anytime I get to film something with you, I'm like, all right. I get to film something with an OG, I'm down. Let's do this. Dude, you got some other OGs. That I know. There's a lot of OGs yeah. out there, but you, man. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough to, to nail them all down. Let's just say this, Scott. You've done a lot to help the channel behind the scenes that not a lot of people realize. And I'm. You have. You, <laughs> like you were have? part of the reason why we set up this thing. I mean, you were helping me get guests. Um, I've been talking with Jordan lately. We're gonna get oh, him Jordan? on the. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get him on the show pretty soon. I have a. I don't know if I told you the story about that kid. No, you have. He's a firefighter. I know that he, much. He is a. He is an Orlando. Fu- it's funny because he works at Orange County Fire Authority out there. <laughs> they got, they got an Orange County out there. That's hilarious. Yeah, so, and here's the kicker: the kid was born and raised in Orange County. Did I tell you that? In the Here last in Orange County? Yeah. Oh, wow. Orange okay. County, California. Yeah, he was born. He he was a, dude, he was a haunt guest when wow. he was growing up, him and his dad. So what so, what, what caused the change to Florida, though? I don't know, honestly. It could be the job. The because, job. I mean, firefighting here is really tough to get into. Oh, yeah. So, um, dude, my fire really sucks. It's <laughs> not burning, but um, yeah, good. I don't know if I told you about that kid. And I told you specifically to, to nail this guy down because he's... I appointed him as one of the captains right. out there. But uh, see, this is one thing I don't remember we talked about. If we talked about it. There was a, a point when we went out there and we're taking a break from training. And me, him, and Lee were sitting down and just, just shooting the shit, you know, like we're doing now. Right. And he says out of left field, he's like, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I remember watching you work at Scary Farm. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> He's like, yeah, dude, me and my dad used to come to haunt all the time. And I remember, he even said he used to, he remembered watching me in the hanging pre-show. Oh, dude. That's yeah. throw, That's even more throwback right there. Yeah, that was, that was uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Is that when you guys were actually doing like sliding shows before the show? Yeah. Yeah. What it was designed for. That was 
great. I remember yeah. I missed. I think the last year, the 2008 was the last time I ever saw them do that. At Isn't least, it? at least for me. Yeah, that was the, like the first year I ever went, and that was the last time. Like when I went back in 2012, they didn't have that. Yeah. So I was well. Once, once the well, especially with the stage in the new location now. Right. But once that wasn't needed for a, a pre-show hype up for the guests, there was no, there was no need to have it. Right. It was fulfilling a need that the show needed to get the crowd boosted, and right. that's what, that was our job. On top of doing all kinds of stupid shit with a cast on stage, <laughs> you know that they always start. Right. You know, I mean, we just kind of finish it. Yeah. Most of the time. So. But, you know, but Jordan, man, he he watched you back in the day, huh? Yeah, he watched me back in the day. And ironic Kid's a enough, fast, a fast study too. Is he? He's a very quick study. Yeah, uh, can't wait to talk with him a little bit. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a good one. He'll probably he'll probably tell you too. Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> like if you bring me up, he's gonna tell you that. I yeah. guarantee it. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I probably will. Yeah, because you know that podcast again wouldn't be possible without you. Well, that was one thing we talked about in the, in the very beginning, though. Remember? Right. You know, because we started talking about Dark Horizon. Yeah. And um, we wanted to kind of give them a little bit of exposure, and you wanted to pick up, you know, mm -hmm. you want to pick them up and put them on. The, I'm uh, hoping that with things looking good this year in Florida, being a little bit more open than we are, yeah. that they actually, I mean, I know the hotel they had it at is out of business now, yeah. but that's an event you can easily move anywhere if you yeah. find the right location. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping. It was, it was a tough, it was a tough location for them because it was kind of a small footprint. Right. But the way they had it laid out and, and um, Adam Conger and his build team, those guys are I got a few they slay it, man. few of my buddies out there that, that who do what I do. Yeah. They went out there for a media night, and they had a ball. They yeah. loved it. So There was another guy that um, I was actually hit up by an old haunt guy, and he told me, hey, my buddy, I can't remember his name, but he has like 750,000 followers on YouTube, wow. and he wanted to do you know, coverage on it. Right. So you know, my, that guy hit up me, and he gave me his name, and then I talked to David, and then David sent me through the person that handles that, so we oh, got that PR, connected. Yeah. yeah, the PR person, and um, I guess he did get in and be able to do coverage. I can't remember Good. his name for the life of me. No, um, I had I had I had two three friends out there who live out there did coverage on it. Yeah, and they're about the same subscriber rate as I am, but they're still going up, which is good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I am. I that's one of the things I want to see out there because I, I remember you were talking about going out there and, and helping that team out and yeah. getting them started. Uh, and you said that was a ball for you. Oh, dude, that was a fun awesome. time. So, I, I, first chance I really had to. I mean, I've I've trained and taught you know thousands of people, but. It was the first chance of me to be able to go somewhere mm -hmm. and, you know, be really hands-on with a team and right. really test what my, my uh, teaching abilities and training abilities were. And considering that kind of how we had things slated, we had it slated for like two weeks. Right. And we had five days. So we had to make sure they were ready to go by day five. And the last day was pretty much, okay, we're going to refine a little bit continue to condition. And then you guys are going to be ready to go. Right. You, know, you guys are going to be on your own. I'm not going to be here have to i have to help run the show you know in california did you hear any good feedback from that team out there i did i was in regular contact with them right i just told them hey if you guys need anything you call me it's right. my number email whatever um they actually put on impromptu shows out there oh nice shows, which was great and that's not something i had set up for them right but i gave them i i taught them enough to where they could you know they, their um abilities could increase right because they were constantly boom 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 um, where their abilities increased, and they just threw it out there and, and did their thing. And I saw some, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. They're doing it yeah. on shitty ground, too. The ground there Not, is horrible. Yeah. Like, I mean, it blew through. I blew through two sets of pads out there because Are I. Are you serious? Yeah. It's that bad? Yeah. Wow. And, and that was I for, say, that was for say, five days, too. Yeah. Wow. And here's the thing, too, because not everybody had pads. So one of my sets were for me, and the other set was for the, the recruits, right? Ooh. So when I say burn through the pads, I mean all the way through all the plastic and down almost to the under layer of fabric. Wow. Underneath the foam. That's yeah, because I, I hear stories of at least them, you know, a lot of people in the community who work at these events, they go like halfway through the season, you know, they'll start going yeah. out, which is it's still a good long amount of time, you know, yeah. but damn, five days and it's all the way to the fabric, dude. Yeah. It's nuts. To the under layer that's against your skin. Yeah. So that's it's, nuts, it man. was pretty nuts. Yeah. And we got to the point, it's like, and I, I told David immediately, you know, once I started seeing how fast the wear was, I told him, I go, okay, these guys are going to need the quality gear, you know, if, if they're going to, you know, they're going to buy it. Um, the, the what's your, what's your go-to for pads? Right now is still Smith. Smith. Uh, it's funny because 
that was kind of a default. I didn't have a choice. Right. Um, when I started, first I had a pair of old Rector Fatboy pads, and the cap wasn't big enough for me, so I had to cut old caps and glue sections on. Right. And then another company came into fruition, which was a full gel foam pad called Dr. Bone Savers, DBS. Okay. Yeah. And their, their actual recap goes from, it bends over the top of the knee and goes down to here. And, it, and it's round. It's, it's an amazing pad. It was the most comfortable pad I had. Right. Went out of business. Went out of business. So, you think with slider dynamics, could you ever see yourself maybe creating something? With pads and stuff? Maybe, maybe like further in conjunction down with one of the, like, 1887 eight, one or... Maybe have your own specific kind of, like, maybe... Something okay, designed for sliders, Something, yes. something maybe, like, uh, you know, the company blows up. These, mm -hmm. these, these people, which the company is going to blow up. Um, well, that remains to be seen. I'm hopeful, but... I, I have all the faith in the world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's going to, you know, they're going to blow up. These people are going to look at you. What if you can design your own style? The Dieter, they call them the Dietermans. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like a signature pad? It's signature pad, dude. Everyone. Uh, I, I mean, I would love to be in a position to where I could go to, you know, one of these companies, whether it's 187, Smith. Right. Uh, a, a company like that that is willing to partner up with me and work out some kind of a deal where I can create, you know, design a pad, develop right. it for sliding i mean it could still be used for skating mm -hmm. but it would just have a little bit more coverage for for, for sliding yeah, yeah for, than what you're typical to it's yeah because that's though, what a lot of these pads are for is for skateboarding mostly that's, that's yeah. what they are that's what they are for yeah it's funny though is because like the default now is smith because i didn't have any options at that time right so that is actually when i brought them in myself initially i just got the caps mm -hmm. you know i brought in myself and then i started selling them Okay. You know, I started taking orders right. and selling them because I was still connected to a, a skate shop right. at the time. So I was selling them and, and I worked out a deal with them. So I was uh, taking orders, picking them up or having them shipped over right. uh, to them. And I was, I was uh, getting them out to people. Yeah. And that's kind of how everybody started going to Smith. Am I hinting at Dieterman used to be a uh, Lords of Dogtown skater back in the day? Well, I wasn't on the Lords of Dogtown. It's funny. You just segued into, into something that I was going to cover later. Let Let's cover it now. Who covered, who covered that? Oh, it was Mooch. Was it? Yeah, I think. No, it was uh, Tyler, actually. Creep. Okay. He's the one that actually brought up Lords of Dogtown. And the funny thing they mentioned that is because when I was a young kid, my right. dad owned a skate shop. Oh, sweet. And it's funny because it was it's in Cyprus over here. Is it still there? Uh, it's, it, not not there. It moved down the street. Okay. And my friend now owns the shop that it turned into. Nice. It's, not a, it's, it's a skate shop again, but right. it was. I'll get to that. So uh, we'll segue into it. Um, so when I was a kid, my dad had this. It was a strictly a skate shop, turned into a BMX shop. Right. But at the time, lots of, Lords of Dogtown were fucking big balls, right? Oh, yeah. Tony Alva, Stacy Peralta, all that, yeah. man. Tony Alva was a regular customer of my dad's. Are you serious? He used to come in all the time. Hey, what's up, Ed? My dad's name. Was, it, was this after his success or was this it before? The, the heart, so yeah. like when he went solo or like when he was uh, still skating th with the team? I think I think it was about the time when the transition happened. I was so young, right. so I, I don't remember much. That's cool though, Alva yeah. coming down to the shop though, man. Yeah, he, he would come down all the time. It's funny too, there's another, there's old brands out there that don't exist anymore. Right. A brand called Powerflex Skateboards. You still They still make wheels, right. but I can't find a deck for my life because... I want one so bad to hang in my office. To hang it up. I want nostalgia, you know? Right. Me being old guy and whatnot. <laughs> hey, no, I'm, I'm all for the vintage stuff, yeah. man. That's the best stuff to hang up. And this, I'm going to bring up a name that you might know from the action sports world. You might. Okay. So my dad was in tight with a Powerflex skate team. Right. Mind you, it was all a family. Right. Like, when I say family, mother, father, and all the kids. Wow. So um, my dad got them to come out, and they put a, a, a glass half pipe out in the... In the um, that's cool. Yeah. So the person that my dad was in contact with for that was Gail Webb. Right. I don't know if you know her, but she still is in that industry. The skating industry? Yeah. Well, uh, just the action sports. She, uh, okay. She's, she's, she's like older than me. Right. And dude, that chick, from what I know, she still dirt bike rides <sighs> and all that shit. She must be in great shape then. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and it's funny because... Um, some of the guys that they do BMX Tuesdays in Huntington Beach, right. Martin Apareo, Eddie Fiola, they still, apparently they still know her. I right. mean, I've seen, like, I follow Martin and Eddie both on Instagram and, you know, I see sometimes I, there's posts about that and right. it's kind of cool because that's from my youth. Right. You know, to see all that stuff. And my dad was so humble about it. Like, Gail 
talks to the crowd on the mic and she tries to get my dad to come out. He's sitting on the, it's <laughs> funny because here's the curb from the shop door, <laughs> and we were way on the other side of the uh, parking lot, right? right? And she's trying to get him to come up. My dad's sitting on the curb going, no, no. And I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? You made this happen. You did this and she just wants to thank you for it. Yeah. So, but it was cool because they were there for, I think, three days. That's awesome. You know, and they came yeah. out every day and her youngest son, he and I became really good friends right. for a short time and then we lost contact after about a year. Right. But, and they weren't skating. He and I were running around the, the shop complex. Yeah. Playing with, you know, throwing water balloons at each other. Right, right. Shit like that, you know. Good old days, man. I mean, skating, I, I, I think skating has become so much more today, but yeah. I do, I love that original style. Yeah, back then it was... Uh, Majority vert. Yeah. And then it phased out. And that's well, it was when, a lot of like pools and stuff back yeah, then, too. Exactly. They would skate the pools. Yeah. That was, and that's, was big. that's when the drought hit. Yeah. So that's when that happened. And then um, vert died. And then that's when skate kind of fizzled started going. Out. It started, yeah. It started going. I was watching a documentary. It was the same thing that happened with Tony Hawk. Yeah. It was like he started, when vert started dying, he was trying to figure out a way to like, okay, how do I keep this going? And yeah, so he gets some video game. Video, and you know what? I grew up on those video games. So Me too, dude. Those Pro are great. Skater, Pro Skater, I love Underground, that game. all those games, man. Yeah. They just remastered one and two, Pro Skater. I think I had Pro Skater two, and I'd spend like all day. This is a soundtrack on there too, man. I, I just love the trying music, to try yeah. to get all the tricks down, the challenges yeah, and everything. Yeah. yeah. So you know that's that's why I was saying it's funny that that you mentioned that. Right. You know, Lords of Dogtown type of thing, and that's from they probably didn't know that. That was from my, my youth. The Dogtown days, man. Yeah. You know, and then, okay, here's a segue that right. I was telling you about. So, my dad sold the shop right. to a buddy of his that was a manager of another shop. Okay. And he wanted his own shop. Right. He bought it. He had it for a while. He ended up passing away. Somebody else took it over. Didn't know that guy. And then an, an Asian guy bought it. Mm -hmm. And he had it for a while. Then he moved out of that location. And then... A skate, the skate and snowboard shop mm -hmm. that I was talking about moved in there. Oh, nice. And here's, here's, here's another weird thing is that I'm super good friends with the old owner, and I, you know, I'm still acquainted with the new owner. Right. But I actually became a sponsored rider for that shop and assistant general manager. What did you, what did you ride? Were you BMX? No, I was a snowboarder. Snowboarder? I was a competitive snowboarder for almost Damn. 20 years. Damn. Seven, 17 and change. You know, I, uh, my That's last national bid was in 2012. That was my last competitive year, and then I decided to hang it up. Do you still go every now and then to do it for fun? Yeah, I haven't been able to go this year just because, you know, money. Yeah. Um, they're they're bl wide open in the snow. They're getting, they got dumped. Did they? So January. right now is the best time to go. Yeah, yeah. So I was supposed to go in January. Couldn't, had an issue with my car. Right. So that didn't work out. So you but, do it every now and then for fun, though? Yeah. You know, I still got a lot of what was in the tank back then, but right. I'm not going up you know going off of super kickers and throwing right the tricks just anywhere. doing it no to way. do it you yeah. know just to have a good time and hang yeah. out my have, roommate actually rides really good too she's, really yeah she's aggressive and she's like i'm like okay i'm just gonna go she's like that's fine i'll keep up with you and i just do the normal stop at every breakover right and she's right there with me you know so badass man. yeah that's badass yeah so and her her husband they just got married a couple months ago, too. I know. I, I follow her on Instagram. Yeah. So congratulations to her if she's watching. She probably might be. <laughs> I mean, she was watching from inside yeah, she there. Was, she was <laughs> spooky now it's gonna be now it's gonna be on uh, on YouTube when the next time she actually watches. She's gonna be like, "What were they yeah. talking about?" Yeah. You, yeah. And Connor. <laughs> um, yeah. So she, you know, that's it was weird because we for a while we we're like, dude, we gotta go at least one once a year. Right. And it's it's tough. What do you guys run out of cabin up there? Uh, my pet, my family has a house up there. Oh, nice! So, and it's five minutes from Snow, Snow Summit and Bear. Oh, perfect! Yeah. So, so you just you're right out right out the door right there, man. Pretty it's right much there. Like where my house is, I can walk down two neighborhood blocks, right. one neighborhood block, and that's the overflow lot for Bear Mountain. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've so. never done snowboarding, but I have a feeling with my history of skateboarding that I would fall a lot. Okay. <laughs> no, you'd be okay if you if you can stand on a skateboard. You can stand on a snowboard. The only thing yeah. is your feet are strapped in. Yeah. So, I mean... And it's snow, it a, so yeah. it doesn't hurt as much. Dude, Shh. If, if you think that, think again. I mean... Are I you serious? So many injuries from that. I would think snow would be a little bit softer than concrete. Uh, no. No? Only when it's powder, dude. Is it because it's because of the cold, too? 99% of the time, runs aren't powder. They're groomed packed powder, so it's packed wow. down by the snow, snow cats, right? Yeah. But... 
Dude, you know how I told you before I've broken every finger? Yeah. Majority of that was from snowboarding. <laughs> Almost broke my tailbone. Destroyed oh. my hip. That was Separated, all from competitive? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, my hip was not. I was on a free ride day, and I hit right. this jump. It was good all day. And I hit this jump, and it pitched me, like, sideways. Right. Like, I was, instead of my board of the ground, my body was like this. Here's the ground. My body's like this. <laughs> And I'm watching my shadow. I'm trying to recover. Right. I was about 35, 40 feet in the air, and I landed full force on my hip. Oh. So that was the one and only time, though, I had to be brought down in a uh, toboggan. You're nuts. You know that? Yeah. You, oh, create, yeah. you help create sliding. You freaking snowboarding. What else What else have you done in your life? I did BMX race, too. You did BMX race? I did BMX race. X Games or? <laughs> no, it was my, well, my dad's shop turned into a bike shop. He had right. a race team, so naturally we were... You know, we yeah. were BMX racers, and we had a we had a shop team there too. Um, some guys were really good. Um, one guy in the early stages, he never rode for us, but he was always a good friend of ours. Right. Um, he goes by his name's Billy Griggs. Okay. In the BMX world, is uh, Mr. Bill. Okay. So, um, he he was an amazing BMX racer back then. Right. And he's still doing it now, and he's in his fifties, and he is crushing his division. Like I follow him too, and I see his things every so often. Apparently, he had a heart condition back then. Oh, he shit. He was still killing it. Damn. Yeah. Wow. I, I saw that in the post. This was years ago. I mean, he had it fixed. And right. The guy's insane. Scott, you've you've seriously done it all. Just about. I've done a lot. I mean. You've dude, done a lot. I've done a lot since, you know, I mean. You just need to get you an overseas hunt now. Have fun yeah. with that. Well, that's the thing. It's like, this This is, like I told you before, when this wasn't something that was supposed to stick. Yeah. It really wasn't. Um, it just... For whatever reason, I latched onto it and mm -hmm. just ran with it and still doing it today. I, I think I have a lot of respect for you because you are putting, honestly, 110%. Um, into slider dynamics obviously it's been on yeah, now, yeah. it's uh, it's been on it's been a hiatus right now yeah. um but it looks like you know the world is slowly getting back into shape yeah you know with vaccines and and stuff opening up which is a, a very positive sign yeah um and it looks good for for you too because it's looking like around summertime when i know you are usually heavy on training yeah. for the you know the upcoming haunts it looking like we might be at a place where we could start doing that you know what i mean yeah. so that's uh, the thing it's like you know i mean one thing we didn't touch on is like yeah i train people but I, I am for hire for other haunts right you know i mean what i bring to the table um and what what i can translate to the to any slider at any given haunt is right. is i mean for a lot of people that want that i think is invaluable yeah it's not just because it's me doing it it's i, I just think it's it, it takes it because it takes the it takes the uh the learning curve out right you know the trial and error well, everyone at Queen Mary loves you, dude. I mean, the slider team loves you. I don't know why. <laughs> they love you, dude. put up with their shit. <laughs> You're, it's because they look at you as a legend, man. You're a legend. It's that stuff. You You're a legend. Dude. You need to stop using that word. You're a legend. I'm just a regular person. Okay? I'm a legend in his mind. So You're I'm a legend in every that. mind of the haunt community. Tuck, 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 tuck. <laughs> a row? You know I'm going to leave that in, right? <laughs> dude this is your stuff man i mean it's not like we're doing anything structured it seems that, like we're just having a good time with that it. was just a, a little joke for sammy right there because sammy gave me shit last podcast like oh he's just gonna leave this in he won't edit it Be like bullshit i edited it um where were okay we? where were we <laughs> uh we were talking about bmxing and oh yeah your life story of my uh, skate shop yeah it's kind of weird because it was a skate shop for a while then it died then we shift to a shifted to a bike shop and that was that did really well. Good, that's good, man. Um, I just thought it was, I thought it was uh, just kind of ironic that the shop that I ended up being sponsored by for snowboarding and being a you know an, an, an employee there was in the exact same location. Right. You know, and the same guy that owned that shop, which was Furnace, now it's just a skate shop. Right. It's in Buena Park on Valley View and Ball now instead of on Valley View and Orange. Okay. Um, so I moved like down the street. Yeah, then. down the street. Yeah. Um, the um the guy that owned Bionic Records, right? Uh, he had one location that a total of three, and two furnace locations that he all owned. Wow. Um, and then he you know he sold them off, uh, closed some of the locations and, and whatnot. So you know, and I'm he lives he lives out of state now. His brother lives um in the IE. So I'm I still talk to them uh, every once in a while. It's nice. funny because his brother lives out here in the IE. He's a 
He's an Audi guy too. <laughs> I got him. I got. I, after he saw mine, mine's an old one too. Right. It's no way. But once he saw mine, he's like, "Oh, dude, I gotta get one." So he got a newer one because he's the guy's bankrolling. Let's be right. Um, but he's like, "Dude, I'm part of the Deets Click now." <laughs> I started laughing. Is that a term? No, it's not a That's a term. term. That's a term. He came up with that. I can't say that. not. But your team might think different. (laughs) No. (laughs) So, during this time, I was, you know, I was young. And then as I started getting older, I was about 10 years old. Right. It's when I learned how to swim. No. And then I started playing water polo. Oh, God. Yeah. (laughs) You've been every... Every, just about almost, it looks, that sounds like every sport on every no. different type Never played of, football. Never played football. You think you'd be good at football? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like a running back? Maybe something. maybe back then. Um, I was pretty quick. I could do the, the 100 and just under 11 seconds, which is was fast back then. Now guys are going, you know, high school kids are probably going low 10s. Right. Um, uh, all my friends played. I was, it's so funny because when I got into high school, for the first week, they kept calling my name on the football team roster, and all my friends were like, "Dude, he's in water polo. He's not playing football." <laughs> you know? about, so okay, let's let's list off some sports. Did you play baseball? Didn't play baseball. I was the one that didn't play the typical sports. I played soccer for two years total, and that's probably okay. the most. So you did soccer, water polo, BMX, and snowboarding. Wrestled. You did wrestling too. Yeah, I did wrestled. I wrest- I swam. Uh, swam. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna count this as a sport. You slid too. It's not a sport. It's an art form. It's a, real. It's a. It's it's what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's just my opinion. Everybody. I, it's an art. I would agree. So, but I, I feel like too, because I, I know me and you've talked about this time and time again. It, you also have to be in really good shape too. Yeah. So I think that's where the sport aspect of it comes to get, in. To be able to do it for any long period of time, you got to be in a decent amount of shape. A yeah. Decent, a decent shape. So. Um. What else is there? I trained MMA for about two years. Damn. That was everything. I, I did jiu-jitsu, wrestling. Did you, do a lot of under, uh, did you do a lot of underground stuff, or did you do... No, I just trained. I never, I never stepped in the cage. By right. the time I started thinking about it, I was already... I was already at the point, like, about a week or two after, I'm like, hey, I want to step in the cage. Were these, like, the up-and-coming guys go and try to go to UFC and all that, or...? Some, yeah. It's funny, because I actually trained out of a, a UFC veteran's gym. He was still oh, in nice. the UFC at the time. Right. You know who uh, Mark Munoz is? The yeah. Champion? Him. Okay. I trained at his gym in... in um, Uh, Lake Forest. <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. Lake Forest, uh, Damn, called Rain man. Training Center. You've done so, it all. It's funny too because my my kickboxing coach back then is right. now in the UFC. Oh really? Yeah. So and he, he's, he's not Conor McGregor, is he? No. I don't like. That guy lives in Ireland. That guy's a badass, though. You can't deny that. I don't like him. That's okay. He's still a badass. I don't like him. Um, no, but he, he, my old coach has taken. You know, he's put in a lot of time and effort. So, and his girlfriend's actually. A fighter too in the US. Really? Yeah. So, and I got to see highlights from his first two fights, and dude, the guy's—he's always been a banger, dude. What's uh, what uh, weight class is he? He is one. Uh, Was it I can't uh, remember what, I think lightweight? One thirty something. Lightweight. Might be. Or featherweight. Featherweight. I, maybe. I don't know. I forgot how the weights break down. I think it go. Yeah, I think featherweight ends around one thirty, one forty. Yeah. And then it goes to lightweight too, because like. He was the first person I told, hey, I think I want to step in the cage. Right. He's like, you serious? I said, yeah. He's like, okay, your training's going to be different now. So once we started that, he started coming down on me hard on form. Right. You know, he's like, you need to tighten up your form. These are the things you need to change. You know, and then um, a high school buddy of mine who I still talk to today, I haven't talked to him in months, but um, he actually trained there and worked there too. His whole family, his kid did jujitsu there. His wife right. did cardio classes. I did the cardio classes too, and that's how it started. Started cardio kickboxing, then I started doing Muay Thai, and then I started rolling jiu-jitsu. It was all fun, right? Yeah. Um, but I told him, and I, I said, dude, I want you to be my corner man. Right. Because I knew that it, when that time came, if I got out of the right headspace, he could pull me back. Right. To, to do that. But it just never, that didn't come to fruition, which I honestly was kind of bummed at the same time. Okay, that's probably not the thing I should have done. Right. You know? Who knows where I where I would have been mentally now? And here you are now, physically, yeah. yeah. So, um, what else did I do? Yeah, what else did you do? <laughs> well, with with like snowboarding too, and right? Snowboarding and swimming and um, water polo. Mm-hmm. I actually for swimming and water polo, I actually was a coach too. Okay. And an official, like for water polo, I 
coached and officiated, and I played. And I was a, a ref for about, on and off for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. As a player, I was pretty solid for 20 plus. Okay. Um, a coach, about 15, 16 years. Uh, swimming, I coached for a few years, you know. Um, but water polo was more my forte back then. I don't see a lot of like high schools doing that anymore. Waterfall? Like that have pools. Like no, there's and, a lot of them still. Oh really? Because yeah. in like my district, there's not one. We have three high schools. Not one has a pool. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's Norwalk. Norwalk La Mirada. La Mirada. Yeah. And what else? Um, that's it. Just Norwalk and La Mirada. Really? Unless, unless I mean, uh, unless because across the street from La Mirada High School is a park, and right there is where they have that. Um, that water park called splash okay. and they got a pool there unless uh, unless uh, unless they go train over there yeah. it could be because a lot of schools trained off site like yeah cerritos high school their home pool was cerritos park east oh okay yeah yeah that facility is amazing you're right at least it was back then like i'm like dude we get to play in that pool again is that the uh is that a, what do they call that um that's the one right there by target right it's off of 166 and okay. south yeah i'm no, not sorry um 166 and bloomfield okay so yeah, it was a big facility. I had friends that worked there too. So in the off season, I could go, Just go, go and swim. swim. Yeah, laps, you know? there you go. So uh, what else? Um, snowboarding. I used to do clinics for kids. Oh, nice. And super pipe. Right. You know, actually, not just for kids, but anybody that was younger than me that mm -hmm. needed help. <laughs> and uh, because I mean, guys that are totally getting to my age, you're not going to listen to a guy the same age. Yeah. Even though I'm beating them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But you know, and it was the, th the best part was is that the organization that I was competing in, mm -hmm. they covered me under their insurance, and they said, "Oh yeah, that's fine. Right, you can do it." So what I would do is, the way I would I would make money off it too, and the way I would make money off it is by the numbers. Right. So I'd do a three hour clinic for fifteen bucks a piece, that's which dope. is dirt cheap. Right. You know, and I would get like 10, 15 kids. Dope. You know, for three hours. And yeah. They would love it. And, okay, I, I have to say this because it's kind of funny, is that. <laughs> One of the kids, he was like this big, and he would take my No, are you serious? He was tiny, dude. He was like- How old was he? I think he was like four or five. Okay. And he used, he used to take my clinic, and his name was Seamus. <laughs> he was an Irish kid, right? Really? And then I'm like, okay, this is, this is like coming to full circle. I was like, holy shit, I used to, I used to that kid used to take my clinic, so I used to teach him. <laughs> he represented Ireland in the Olympic Games as a snowboarder. No way. Yes. At the, at the Winter Games? Yeah. That's like, legit, dude. Yeah, he was the only only. That would have been athlete. great if after they interviewed him, I want to shout out Scott Dearman. Remember me? <laughs> yeah, remember his yeah, parents was like were super dope. Fire, four or five years old. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I so used to, I was just like watching the little kids. I'm like, dude, these kids are the future. Oh yeah, sport, and then you see them like 20 years down the line, and they're freaking dude, shit, in the well, Olympics. Sean, well, that's a perfect example of that. Oh yeah, you know, I mean that kid was in my same organization right and i used to watch him just destroy kids his age like just annihilate them now that guy's he does everything now he skateboards too doesn't he yeah and he, he's a he's surfers multi-gold medalist multi-gold medalist yeah snowboard all this shit surf snowboards yeah he does all the freaking one as long as it has a board on it he'll be there yep that's um, him that guy he took the surfing world though i mean when he started like he he's pretty like he's one of the big names up there now it's crazy um it's crazy dude i mean that kid's so talented yeah you know sorry i'm kind of fixing the fire cause you can uh, again. you can hear the you can probably hear the fire and crack in the mic which would be very uh crackle, crackle, crackle. yeah there you go <laughs> that'd be very therapeutic for some people yeah let's talk about let's finally get to it let's talk about let's see what notes you got all right okay sorry we keep getting off track but that's what shoot the shit is yeah of course man that's why we did this podcast yeah oh another one too is mooch he says this fucking guy <laughs> you know that like when he said that I started laughing so hard because it's something that I started as a joke. Right. And they just, you know how they are. They take it and run with shit like that. Yep. You know, and he, he takes exception, takes it exceptionally funny for whatever reason. Yep. But, you know, Mooch is the kind of guy that uh, he's better now. He kind of watches what he says when he's around me. Right. Because every time he says something, I make it so he puts his foot in his mouth. I always have a rebuttal <laughs> for him. And he'll tell you that too. Right, Paul? He'll tell you that. Be playing with Xbox and be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I do mean, that. But, I mean, as a whole, the, the team is, is a good group of kids. They're just, right. they can be very rambunctious. And so that's when I'm like, hey, you guys got to chill. Right. You know, um, let's see. Omar? <laughs> Lone Star? Okay. Yep. He, he, he brought up his, his whole character development thing, right? And mm -hmm. how I was telling him, yeah, do the simple things. Mm -hmm. What he didn't tell you is that he had alternative names. I gave him alternative names for his character before he came up with Lone Star. What do you got? 
what is the what did he not what did he leave out so selfishly of him? I understand why he did. He's like, I'm not, I'm not calling myself that. <laughs> so he starts cracking up before he even tells it. <laughs> because when I, when I said this to Omar, it's like he says, I need a name. It took me all of two seconds to come up with two just shitty derogatory names. <laughs> and he starts like, he's like, oh, no, no. So the first one, because he wants to be a cowboy, right? So I'm thinking horse, bull, stuff like that. Yeah, bull dyke. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the next one is even better. Bokaki. <laughs> Sorry, Omar, dude. I'm totally ratting you out, but, you know, but Lone Star, it does suit him. Lone Star, yeah. And I was telling him, dude, and I, I, was, I was trying to get Draven, our MC for the show. I go, dude, right. you got to call him Bokaki. <laughs> Just one time. You know, and he's like, no, I can't do that, man. You're like, give me the mic. I'll do it. Yeah, well, I was, you can't see me during the show. Yeah. I was, I was behind the tower running, running the. Oh, secretive! Yeah. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna pay attention to the tower well, with the, the music. This last year, this last year, you could see me standing there if you looked. Yeah. There was no box to stand behind. It was just propped up behind the light tower. I'm gonna purposely film you. I'm not supposed to be filming the show. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I'll see you, and I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> be like, it's for the content. That'd be the intro for the video right there. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I don't have much on, on Jan except for he talked a lot, <laughs> and Jay was super quiet. Um, but you know what, Jay, since you give me one, I give you one too. <laughs> so, but he, he is right, like, <laughs> like, especially with him too, like, he'll say stuff. I, I love shit talking with the guy. Yeah. You know, he's a good kid. Um, he's, becoming a, he's training to become a freaking wrestler right now. Yeah, I know. He's, he's got a ton of natural talent. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing with him is that it was very hard for him to understand why you can't train for sliding like you do normal. Yeah. You know, like the way he trains when he lifts, he's a power lifter. Right. And, um, you know, with rugby too and his wrestling, I go, you can't train your muscles like that. You need long fiber, endurance, fast twitch muscles. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to get it for him to understand it. Uh, but he still power lifts, which I think is the kid's a beast. Oh yeah. You know, but when he shifts, I mean, I'm, Telling you right now, Jay, when you see this, I'm going to harp on you <laughs> to change your, your lifting habits because it's not going to benefit you to be a power lifter with short fiber muscles. Yeah. That guy's a beast, though, man. I, I, I've been, he's been sending me clips of him training and wrestling. He's all happy and excited. This is like something he wants to do, and I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm here, dude. I'm supporting it. Yeah. Oh, I got to backtrack. So, cavities. <laughs> this guy. So, as I mean. He, as, 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 as off camera, out, off camera, we talked about it at the Street Food Tuesday a little bit about uh, his nickname for when he gets when everyone gets hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Pulled Justin. Yeah, and he he owns that. Because yeah, he's like you know, so he gets it, you know. But I still give him shit. For I brought I brought it up when we were playing Call of Duty. He died. I'm like, hey, you just pulled a Justin, bro. Yeah, good he's job. Like, oh man, he's so like, shut he, up. <laughs> you know, it's funny too. Like him and Bronx like to always bag on me for my lazy eye right yeah and i go you guys it doesn't work anymore when i own that shit like yeah. they make fun of myself for it yeah you know but they still try like it's like oh yo i <laughs> i'm like that's kind of funny but it's not because i own it yeah that's what i think that's the, he was the only one that did that on the show yeah yeah you know but I, if you ever got bronx on which i know he doesn't want to so i'm gonna get good. i'm gonna get you on bro you watch um he would do it too guaranteed. yeah i know he would you know totally uh, and then the last two, you got the parents. You, know? <laughs> you got Shutters and, and Sparrow. Um, I want to touch a little bit on 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 Shutters. Um, initially, when she first came in, she was just going to do PR, and then she got she basically became. I did not know that she was going to be be more behind the scenes. Yeah. Wow. Um, but she, I, I've already I've already said to her said this to her, but she's done an, a great job on. She's the one that spearheads this the food truck Tuesday thing. Yeah. And she's done a great job on, on keeping the team active and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, everybody wants to participate when they can. And the majority of the time, over half the team is there. Right. You know, even Omar drives down from Central California to do it when he can. Mm -hmm. You know, which is great. So, I mean, it, she's taken over, like, the Instagram accounts, the Facebooks. So she puts a lot of the stuff up. Her and I talk about stuff. If she has any questions, I talk to her. Um, but as far as that stuff goes, that's all her. You know, and that's that's amazing. Yeah. You know, with uh, with all that stuff, you know, and Mike, Mike is he, he he likes to call me the what did he say the elder something like that. Oh, yeah. What did he, what did he say? 
That podcast just came out today too. Yeah, I, know. I can't remember, but I watched. Dude. And I was chuckling. Yeah. By the way, thanks for the shout out for the comp- for Slider Dynamics, Mike. Much appreciated. Of course. Um, but he's dude, he's the second oldest on the, the group now. <laughs> From kidding. now that I'm starting to uncover the veil a little bit, I'm like, yeah, you talking about not stories that I've heard from other guys that I was like, oh, capping out, dude. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. His 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 story was was is interesting, which he he did touch on it and. Well, just the whole premise of him dressing up as a girl for Han. That's at Dark Harbor, not at Han. At Dark Harbor. At Dark Harbor. KSF, yeah. yeah, yeah. But what he did at Dark Harbor, what was initially I was told to ask because of, you know, a lot of the team, you know, it's funny at some points. Yeah. Ended up turning to a serious people need to see this story. Yeah, of, the of, rum spice thing. Yeah, of how women get treated at Han. Yeah, and it's true. Now, yeah. I didn't really get the whole idea why I was doing it. I said I was thinking, okay, it's Mike. He's got some reason right. behind it, but I never really got a chance to sit down and talk to him about it. The character is great, mm-hmm. you know, but now he ex- he's explained it. Now he knows. Yeah, you know, it gives it more validity. Um, yeah, but that's something he did at Dark Harbor. Yeah, and that would happened a number of years after he had already been there. I mean, so many people. I mean, because when I specifically Bronx. Uh, when I was talking to him, he's like, you got to ask him about Run Spice. And I was like, all right. But he was laughing while doing it. So I'm over here thinking it's yeah, going the only one to ask 10 questions every podcast. Yeah. Um, Yet he doesn't want to be on one. Yeah. Um, but Fucking guy, when, when he told me, you know, he was kind of laughing. I was like, oh, it's got to be a funny story. And in the beginning, when we started talking about it, yeah, I mean, you know, Shutters, she made her jokes and yeah. everybody made. But then when he started explaining it, I was like, oh, my God, like I, I legit see this at some haunts, though where you see women get mistreated and they, you know, they go through a lot of shit at the night, you know? And it's like, yeah. it, it's sad because it should all be equal, you know? And no one should be getting treated wrong. I mean, but then again, obviously you can never control these crowds, man. I yeah. mean, people drink, people come pregame and stuff. And it's like, you know, you don't know what you're getting every night. Yeah. One night That's can be smooth sailing. One night can just be a shit night. Yeah. And I've seen that as a guest. Yeah. You know, you know, Mike touched on security protocol at Dark Harbor. Right. It's pretty fucking good. Oh, it's really lie. good. You know? No, I, I, I agree. It's really good. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I've talked to a handful of the, the security guys, right. the main security guys, and they're all super cool. And, you know, kind of, I, I talk to them about certain things and what certain things are considered removal, what things aren't, mm-hmm. and how they handle that. It's like, but they said, like, hey, you know, if something that's bad enough and you feel the need to be removed, we'll take care of it. Right. You know, and it's, it's, it's been great on mm-hmm. that side. You know, nobody, no security is perfect because you just can't catch everything. Yeah, right? no, yeah, and I agree with that 100%. Yeah, yeah, there's there's so much people that come to those events. You got thousands of people coming to that event yeah. every night. You can't, you're not going to catch every one of them. Yeah. You're going to. But they handle everything they come across. Yeah, and that's, you know? that's, the, that's, the, that's the best thing that you can hope for is yeah. a good security team that when you need them or something yeah. pops off in front of you that. You can't hold them liable for things they don't even know about. Yeah. You just can't, you know. Yeah, yeah. the nature of the industry. Yeah. As a whole. Does it suck? Of course it does. Of course. You know, but when, especially when you become talent, it's it's those things that you understand that these are the th- things you got to deal with. Right. You know, um, has it gotten worse over the years, at least that I've seen? Yeah. Right. It has, you know. Uh, people become more, well, there's entitlement, so they become, they, they don't, you just do whatever they feel they, they want, mm-hmm. you know, and that sucks, mm-hmm. you know. But um, you do the best you can. You make adjustments yeah. along the way. That's all you can do. Yeah, I mean, you just got to kind of roll with what's going on, you know. It's just, yeah, you just got to hope for, the, like you said, hope for the best, man. And Yeah. I mean, that's my thing is, and, and I'm a big supporter of this, is if you go to a haunt as a guest, just don't be an asshole. Yeah. It's just you're there to – you pay the money, your hard-earned money to have a good time. Yeah. You know? These th- these events are not cheap. No. Not not. A, like, they're running anywhere from 50 to to $100, yeah. depending on the event. Yeah, even more if you get a VIP. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's, that, from the 50 to 100 that's just general admission usually. Yeah. So, And if you want VIP, all that, it goes up more. But it, it's not cheap to go to this. So yeah. the best advice I can give anyone out there watching – don't be stupid, man, because you're going to get kicked out, and then there goes your yeah. ticket. You know, there goes your night. I hope my mic is on. It's on, yeah. I okay. It. I can see it. The bar is raising you every time it's on. Yeah, I should check it. Let me see if it's... If it is, I'll go get the block. If it's still on. I can get another plug out here.
Okay, that's cool. Just wanted to make sure you had. Yeah. The good thing about the phone is that I can record for as long as I want, as long as I have the space. I have the space because I have yeah. the biggest battery. Um, yeah, Mike's, Mike's story is, is interesting. I mean, he started, as you know, he started out at, at, at Knott's. Right. And came over. It's like when I when I took over Cast Lita in, in Ghost Town, um, I couldn't get him. I couldn't get him back in there the first year because the first year that I, I became lead, I was brought in late. Right. And because somebody that was supposed to do it ended up backing out. Okay. So it was it was timing. Like I walked in. I don't know if I told you this story. I don't think I have. Um, I texted John Cook, mm-hmm. and that's when he was still heading up um, infected. And I said, "Hey, dude, do you have any?" squad leader positions open he's like yeah i got one left but you got to come down and get it today i said okay i'll be down in 10 minutes you know considering here yeah right there right yeah and so as i'm walking in i think i texted him i said i'm here i'm walking over i walk in the employment center and he just happens to come out the audition area right right like it was timing was like perfect perfect he was coming out i was coming in and this is the shitty part i felt bad for everybody else because this, the area was full waiting people waiting right. For positions right he calls me aside He's like, hey, come here. Right when I walk in, no waiting, right? Yeah. And everybody's looking at me like, who the fuck is this? Guy? <laughs> and he, he tells me, he's like, hey, so we got a scenario for you. I said, what's that? He's like, I have the squad leader position, which you can have it if you want it. Or I was just told that Ghost Town's cast lead position is open. Do you want that? I said, I want it. He's like, okay, give me a minute. He goes back in there. About two minutes later, the door opens and I hear Brooke, Dieterman, get in here. <laughs> and again, <laughs> people are looking at me like, who the fuck is this guy? This guy's in trouble. I, if I was waiting out there, I'd be like, this guy's fucked, dude. <laughs> so I walk in, talk to her for 30 seconds. She's like, so you know the deal? I said, yeah. She's like, you want the job? I said, yes. She's like, you're hired. Boom. And I walk out and I leave and I felt bad. You know, because all the people. Yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't. Coming for the same role that they were. Yeah, they were. Were they all characters? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. what I understood. Yeah. Because all the cast leads and talent captains, they get hired on a different day than anybody else. So they were already all set in place. They already had them all hired. Yeah. Or? So, and that's that's that was 2014. Okay. When I came in as a cast. Now, leader. is that like obviously taking that role as to like kind of supervising that area? Is that something that you kind of like? Man, I used to like do this shit now i'm actually like supervising is that like an accomplishment for you for me it was natural progression mm-hmm. and i i think it was time for me to move to the next next phase right and i thought about it in 2005 they should have a position like this right and i brought it up but it never got brought to fruition until i think two years um i think 2012 okay and um you know I, it was just a natural uh step for me because you're good at it I, I I would like to think so. Yeah, you know, you're really good at it. I mean, from what I've seen at, at Queen, if you're if you're running most of the, if you're running all the streets, yeah, I enjoyed myself. I had a fun time and <laughs> watching everybody work. Yeah, it's hilarious, dude. The best part is when everybody's even if they're not firing all cylinders, they're out there having a good time and getting yeah. Stars, it's all that really matters. You know, it's you a good it's a good team family yeah. effort. You know what I mean? It's you just like people work. Yeah, you, know, you give them props when you need to. It's like, hey, you guys are doing great, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, anything like that. And if they do something wrong, then you dial them back. Now, are you the type that every night you pull everyone in and have like a little note session? Yep. And every, then, every day before uh, opening, I would have a quick meeting. <clears throat> and because of the, <laughs> the other cast leads from the other mazes that were uh, in the break area in the back, like right. behind Rogue, they always had me do theirs. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are fuckers. But I'm like, I'll just do it. <laughs> so I would do a group one. Right. And I said, okay, you guys are go ahead and go free. Street uh, street talent, you can go. Slider stay because I always have separate notes for them too. Right. So I do that. Tom, what how it was the night before, what the actual numbers were, what the numbers are going to be, uh, um, you know, slated for that night, and kind of like if I feel a weird vibe, I'll tell them, hey, feeling a weird vibe tonight, just kind of be a little more on alert. Mm-hmm. You know, watch yourselves, that type of thing, and that's pretty much it. Damn. You know, and then they go out there and do their thing. Right. So like when I have to. When I can go out there and watch my team work the whole night, everybody, and not have to worry about anything, that's a good day. Oh, yeah. But that's a rarity. It's really? a rarity, especially this last year. I mean, there were so many things I had going on. Yeah. Like, it was, this last year I was busier than the 
the year prior, right? Like threefold, you know, with uh, staging for um, shows, and like I would do <laughs> slider show, go over do the main stage show, slider show, main <laughs> stage show, and then walk the other side, back and forth, man. Yeah, it was it was pretty f- fucking crazy. Now, how early on do they bring you on board before the actual event? Is it about a month or two before uh, they more than that? Um, to get everyone there's a going, a ton of paperwork for talent that we have to do. Right. So usually I get brought in to help organize all that stuff too. Like, okay. Um, so you're there pretty much all summer then. Uh, I think it's about. Would you say about July? Fuck, I can't remember when they brought me in last time. Because I know by the time July and July runs around, Midsummer Scream's happening. So they're yeah. they're announcing stuff. They they have stuff ready. Um, I, I would say I would say I get a few days here and there, starting that early. But, you right. Know, I'll just it, I don't know. It's it's hard to. Keep it. I just know in the hey, can you come? I'm like, yeah, I'm available. So I know yeah. August has to be like a hell month for you guys because that's like the last month before the yeah, event opens. Yeah, the way like it's weird because the way the talent team works, where we kind of are its own unit, right? So once we get all our paperwork dialed in, it's getting everybody uh, flowing through is, is smooth, right? For the most part, paperwork's just always the worst part. Yeah, getting everything because there's so many of them. Yeah. Alphabetize, put everything in folder and envelopes for them, and oh, dude, that's that can be a nightmare. You have people check, you have to check everything, make sure they have everything yep. too. And do that, all and that. then when we actually do the hiring day, like, right. oh my god, sometimes it's really bad. Some days, and some days it's like smooth. See, I'm because I'm fascinated. I mean, you go so much as a guest that you're more like, okay, you just you see you're seeing the 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 production that's being put on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Best exactly. way I'll speak to it in like theater terms. Yeah. Best way is you're seeing you're seeing the final product go on stage. Yeah. And but I like I I was a guy in theater that did a lot of the behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm always been fascinated of how things are put on and and how the process goes yeah. and then, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that want to know behind the scenes too cuz behind the scenes I always say this. Every time I get a new movie that I've already seen, I want to go straight to the behind the scenes because I want to see how this movie was made. Yeah, You don't so, work behind the scenes for Haunt too, right? Yeah. O- outside of being cast lead. Oh, seriously? I actually worked in the props department too. Did you really? For, just for a year in 2016. You're just full of surprises, aren't you? Dude, that... <laughs> talk about ass-busting work, but oh my God, so much fun. Right. The long hours, like you're working on vapors. Damn. Putting shit in, but dude, I, I've, I learned how to make um, full... Full uh, foam bodies and stuff. Nice. It's super dope, dude. Nice. It's a fucking mess, but it's awesome. <laughs> all, all the hard work pays off at the end, though. You know, you just yeah. see, to see everything in complete. And you know what, though, I'm not gonna lie. Like being at Knotts, because you know how Knotts is haunted too, right? Yeah. Being at Knotts at like two, three in the morning, it's creepy. By yourself at, at at an attraction. Yeah. Is fucking scary. Oh yeah. Because no, I've walked dude. through. I've walked through a maze. Uh, I, I've gotten to see like a couple, even just home haunts. But you know, I've I've gotten to walk through them during the day uh-huh. i just get this creepy vibe i don't, I don't know why i feel yeah. i feel uh, ironically i feel way more comfortable going through it when it's lit up at night and when people actually scare me than during the day when it's just there's nothing going on yeah it's just i don't know it's weird but it makes sense in a way you know i mean you yeah. understand dude i'm telling you man like you know where pumpkin eater is right and yeah Camp snoopy yeah so i was working in there by myself one day oh god and, you know, I was putting in all the pumpkins. Right. And it was, I think it was probably like 3.15. You know, and, and everybody hasn't, hadn't filtered back from lunch yet. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go to work, whatever. I got my little radio and I'm working. I kept hearing shit. <laughs> and I'm the only one in there. I'm looking around. I'm like, fuck this. I went out and stood <laughs> in the midway until somebody came in. <laughs> that, that was, it, it fucking scared me, dude. Fuck this. Yeah. It just drops everything and goes outside and chills. Yeah. Well, you know how you always ask, you asked everybody any experiences on the boat. Yeah, I have. I got yeah, There we go. Okay, let's hear. Now, not I'm not talking about the one that I had when I was at. Um, when we did that motorcycle event that I told you about the first time. Right. Image kicked the air mattress. Yeah, yeah. This last year, um, the same level of the boat where the pool is that's condemned and shut down. The 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 little girl ghost pool. Yeah. Scary Mary pool. Yeah. Yeah. So when you walk past that and you go to the left, there's bathroom's right there right the men's bathroom is right there so i go in there that's always the bathroom we go to because the closest one right so i go in there do my thing and i'm washing my hands you know nobody's out nobody else in the bathroom i i know for a fact <laughs> i'm washing my hands and i turn around grab the towel dry my hands and as i'm looking at the mirror the sink my far right on the other side of the bathroom yeah turns on by itself oh, that, dude. I, go, I go oh interesting okay. <laughs> 
I finish drying my hands and I walk out like nothing happened. I didn't go turn off or anything. I just left it alone. He wanted a friend, dude. So I'm like, cool. <laughs> he wanted a nice friend. So that's the only that's the only um he or I've had since. I'm gonna say it's a he because that's a men's restroom, unless that was a women's restroom back in the day. Could be. Uh, he or she wanted a friend. Could be. You know. You know what's weird is like I've walked that footprint. But I, every night by myself at, after closing, like right. we have our wrap where everybody gets checked out. Right. And then we have to go back to the blue building and mm-hmm. do all our paperwork, get everything organized, get our notes for the night. My job was always to walk the footprint and lock the um, the uh, Connex bin up where everybody stored their props. Right. You know, so everybody's going this way. I'm going this way. Yeah. It's Carnival Cruise Line side. Right. And... Always walking the footprint, but I never felt a single thing doing that. Man, that's nuts. Yeah. I, I, it's one of my, my goals in when, when it opens up to, to do some ghost hunting there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that'd be that group video right there. We'll get the sliders, see what they think. That'd, yeah. be, that'd be fun. You know what's funny is like I used, to, I used to go there too as a guest on our off nights. Right. I was there with my, um, with my buddy uh, in our group, uh, Cowboy Bobby. Okay. <laughs> so we put him in the front of the room, right? <laughs> and this is when Graceful Gale still had her own maze. Right. And we were just about to enter the ballroom area, right? And we come around the corner, and he's like already leaning back, right? He goes around the corner, and somebody spooks. He's like, ah! <laughs> I was telling. Oh my god! It's I so was so funny. I was telling Mooch last night too because it's one of the things where, like, if I don't expect it, it's one of those quick, like, oh, uh, things. Yeah. So, like, I, I think I was walking around the corner, I, one of the Queen Mary mazes. I think. Um, I gotta remind you too. Uh, I, I think I got scared of p- potentially getting a concussion that night rather than the thing because I was just so tall for the in boat mazes that I was oh, hitting my yeah, head on all yeah, the pipes. Yeah. So I was like, I am probably gonna end up with a concussion. Dude, there were pipes that were low enough where I had to duck my head in certain. Yeah, areas. but like you think about it, like, you're walking through this maze and everything's pretty much kind of dark. For example, it was feast really. Yeah. I was walking through like the opening of feast, you could barely see like to the end of the hallway, um, and I hit my head like twice. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where, like, when someone, if I'm not expecting it, I walk around the corner. It's like if they scare me, it's one of those, oh, and then I just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those, like, just quick reactions. Like, you don't know what to do, but, like, that's the first thing that popped in your head. See, honestly, I wish I could still get startled. Like, right. it takes a lot for that to happen now. Like, I'm super stoked that when I go through these mazes on a nightly basis to see these guys work, that they make an effort to try to scare me too even though it doesn't work you're just too immune to it by now huh yeah like i have a callus over that reaction (laughs) that sensory overload is not what will it actually take you think an extreme haunt would actually be something i don't know because i went through 17th door and they touch and grab and everything and that did nothing either damn you know take it to that other one that's uh the shocking part like you know you get that mild shock it's like ah fuck and then my friend smiley char char meyer she she works there right and this was in 2016. There used to be a room where you go in, you sit in wheelchairs. Right. She's the doctor at the desk. <sighs> I didn't recognize her when I walked in. She recognized me, and she kept fucking shocking me. <laughs> and See? then after a third time, she's like, ha ha, Dieterman. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I look at her, and then I talked to her for a minute before I leave, and I hugged her, and then we went on. But that happened like four times in the maze. People <laughs> kept calling me by name. I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> you know? I said it before, and I'll say it again. Legend. But the thing is, like, some of these people I may have never met before. Yeah. They just know me, which is kind of creepy. Dude. Stop it. <laughs> you know why they know you, Dust Scott? Because of Season of Screams. Because of Legend. Which, have you seen Season of Screams? No. Is that the one with, is that the one with the show Merrick Headbanging? No, that's That was Origins. the origin. Yeah. Season of Screams is the original. No, I haven't seen it. I've yeah. it. Is it on YouTube? It's on, uh, it might be, it's on Plex. Well, it's on my buddy's Plex. I gotta play. I gotta pay for it. Uh, well, I don't know. He just gave me an invite to his thing. So okay, if I have to pay for it, I mean, I'll just I gotta wait. Yeah, you know, yeah, stimu- I don't, I don't, like stimulus a- money, tax money coming soon. Yeah, so. <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, no, I, that's I'm I'm all over that fucking thing. Right. So that's where a lot of people like you know. It's funny is well, you're like friends with like Ted and John and all them, aren't you, dude? You guys like scared together back in the day, man. Ted. Dude, the shit we did do in his rookie year as initiation was hilarious. And this guy's over here. New Human Sunday, which he never brings up. This guy. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Well, okay. This He'll is, probably get pissed at you now if you if he Ted, if, if you're he watching so, this. I'm ratting you out because you never. You should like up, purposely send it. And it's part of your history of haunt. You gotta it's like send deal. this to him now. Just huh? so you gotta show him this. Like, hey, 
By the I, way, I haven't talked to him forever, but I'm sure if he sees it, he'll he'll be What's like. What, oh, fuck you dude. saw him at Han X, didn't you? Didn't you go say hi or anything? No. I talked to him for like five, ten minutes, yeah. and he didn't bring it up in his his panel either. Yeah. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, dude, it's not all bread and butter, man. It's fun and games too. <laughs> so, this is the bread idea between me and the Green Goblin. Right. I'm like, okay, dude, we got to do something with Ted, and we got his lead involved too. Oh. Back there was the talent captains. See, this is this is back when we could still do a lot of stuff. Yeah. So. He was in the swamp at that time. He, his character was Dr. Malaria. Right. So, and he was always working the back. <laughs> you know, and we knew that. Right. Because we, we play this game called Capture the Body. Yeah. And there was a body they had over there. We tried to st- steal it from there. And right. Down, and vice versa. So we walk in and we see his TC. And we're like, hey, we're, we're going to get him. She's like, okay. <laughs> she follows us like 15 feet behind us through the, through the, through the through Right. The, right. <laughs> we get him in the back and there's like this sacrifice table. Right. He didn't think anything of it. We grabbed him. We duct taped his wrists and his ankles. Oh. Laid him down. We turned him into a human Sunday. We put whipped cream on him. That's cold. No, not, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> whipped cream. Rainbow sprinkles. Chopped nuts. Something else. And every time we did that, Green God's like, wait, 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 wait. It's missing something. <laughs> we kept doing it. Did you, throw, did you throw some chocolate syrup on there? Some caramel? We did do some chocolate syrup. And he looks at us afterwards. You guys suck. It's like... Welcome to Hunt, buddy. He spent over an hour cleaning his costume because it was the last night. Because he thought he was going to get in trouble. Oh, I man. <laughs> we found that out. We were Freaking, like, oh, dude, it's even better. So many years later, this guy's designing mazes for Halloween Horror Nights, dude. Yeah. The freaking guy is legendary. Him and I'm waiting for Cook to still get on the show. Yeah, you, you, had, him, you had him lined up at some point, right? I like, did. He was, um, I think he's in Texas right now. He was in Texas, and I know he's, he's I, th- I think I read something he's going to be doing Fear Farm this year. Yeah, in Arizona, which I went to last year, and so if it gets a little cookbook uh, initiation, he's got a good story too. For being yeah, a total I, I can't wait ass. to the day. I mean, you know, yeah. I, and I, I don't ever get mad when he counts or anything because the guy's a fucking busy guy. Yeah, he is. So I don't. I'm not mad one bit. I'm like, dude, you're bringing our nightmares to life. You, you know take I your time. Him four times. <laughs> he scheduled him four times for his um, say hello to the Undertaker video. I never told you that either. Was that the one you were a demon in? Yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about oh, it. Oh, we did? Did we? Yeah. yeah I can't, and then I, after I the podcast, you actually times. showed me the video. Yeah, that's and right. I was like, oh, that's you? That looks cool. So, and, you know, I, I felt bad, but I couldn't because my schedule was so yeah. fucked up at that point. Yeah. You know? I was a sales rep at the time, so, and I always had to go here, go there. I you was, you, the uh, county, the county. you a good talker? You could sell people things? Uh, it just depends. I mean, I try to let the... Um, let the product sell itself. Right. You know, my, my best part is creating that personal relationship with yeah. the, with the um, customer. Um, in that, in that arena, it's tough though, because there's no loyalty really. Right. It's like, dude, if somebody's saving, saving another one or two cents per garment, they're going to jump ship. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of service you're giving them. Yeah. You know, so the beautiful world of sales right there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing. I worked in the garment business. I was slinging blank t-shirts and hoodies. Right. You know, so I always say uh, slinging tees and pushing fleece like a drug dealer. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. So you've, I mean, this is another, you, you, when you say you have podcasts among podcasts of things to talk about, this is like the second, actually now third one that we've done of new things I've never known about you. Yeah. Well, so. there, is a, there is a, like I said, there's a lot of history, I guess you could say, right. outside of all this stuff um why the halloween industry has stuck with me for so long i couldn't tell you i just know that i enjoy it still Mm -hmm. um you know and i mean you know us man we live breathe horror dude i mean whether it whether it's it's haunts movies events whatever it is if it's horror related i'm gonna and you know what's funny is like 2017 when i decided to start this channel like i wasn't as into horror as i am right now yeah. but i was still into it you know like i was i knew freddie jason Larry, Fred, i know all those you know the, yeah. the main guys but it wasn't till i started doing this channel that i started diving deep into like the the deep cuts of horror that you don't see like, yeah like the the b horror movies that a lot of people praise and yeah. you know all this stuff and then just just getting it i i think the funnest part of 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 this this channel is just getting to interview people i mean yeah. i've i've gotten to talk with so many people yeah you know you you being one of them just just dive deep and dive deep yeah your life outside of the haunt room. And, and that's the that's the platform i want to provide is like i i want to know the people as people yeah i mean yeah i'm going to talk about your character i'm going to talk about your inspiration of you know the things you do in haunt but uh, 
overall, I want people to know you as people too. Yeah. I don't want people to come up to you and just be like, oh, you're that dude from, no, it's like, I want people to know, oh yeah, I remember seeing you like on the podcast and, and also yeah. you work at Queen Mary and, and you do all this other stuff, you know? I mean, today people are going to, now people are going to come up to you and be like, oh, you used to be a snowboarder, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny is, I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy named Question. No. Okay. He was a haunt guy too. He actually is the, the, the manager over at Cauldron. Okay. So he and I go way back. Right. Way back. Like he's, I'm going to segue into something else, but he's <laughs> part of my clan at Renfair. <laughs> he never goes anymore, but so, but um, he had known that I was a competitive snowboarder for, at that point, probably like 10 years. Right. Maybe, maybe eight years. And this was a fair. And his drunk was a fucking Dieterman, man. <laughs> I always, I hear all this stuff about you, you know, competing, competing in snowboarding stuff. We got to go ride. I said, okay, when do you want to? <laughs> and you know, I was drunk too. I'm like, let's go ride. Yeah. It never happened because all he's doing is running his mouth. Yeah. You know, yeah, I just called you out a question in case you see this. <laughs> this is a long time ago. He probably doesn't even remember that. He's like a different guy now. Yeah. You know, in, in a good way. Yeah, that's good. So, but now leading into that, <laughs> Planet Fair, right? Ran Fair, man. I've heard so many things from so many people yeah. about this uh, the, this event. It got canceled last year, right? Because of COVID. Yeah, this year, too. It's canceled this year, yeah. too? You think maybe next year, maybe? Hopefully. It came out a few weeks ago that they put the axe to it again, which is a bummer because that's a, dude, that's a good way to relieve stress it is you know, you know, i mean a lot, for people who are into the, like the renaissance era and everything yeah. i mean i think that's if it, that's that's you yeah. i think i would go more to just kind of look at everybody and, and just yeah, you, for you you'd go and you'd, you'd have a field day taking pictures yeah like you'd snap photos of people all day if you ever do that best thing i do is say best thing i could tell you is advice is if you want a picture of somebody especially females just ask them hey can i get a quick picture of you Mm -hmm. you know, just so they don't think you're creepers. No, yeah, definitely. There's so many guys with cell phones. Snap, snap, snap. It's like, no, dude, yeah. Fucking, be, you know. be, be polite, man. If they don't yeah. want their picture taken, like, hey, they don't yeah. want their picture. They're, they're just there to have a good time. They don't want their picture taken, you know? It's yeah. like, but there's people that will get creative and they're like, yeah, go for it, you know? And then you yeah. see them all over like Instagram and whatnot. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is that I didn't want to go to a fair for a long time. And then again, the Green Goblin right. convinced me, <laughs> dude, just go. I said, all right, I'll go this one time. You dress up and everything? The first time, yes, but it was kind of half-assed. I, I wore one of his loner kilts, <laughs> and I had I borrowed a shirt. The only thing I had was was mine was um, a pouch, right, and a three-inch belt. That's it. I wore Birkenstocks, barefoot with Birkenstocks, which sucked. <laughs> and I went the first time, and I loved it. Right. And after that, the next weekend we went, I had almost everything: boots, a sword, everything, you know. And then badass. As we started going. Then we decided to get our own tartan. Right. Okay, and the idea was, okay, hey, dude, let's do, let's make a clan that's crossover, haunt people to fair. Nice. Only. It's like that one scene. Have you ever seen that movie, Role Models? Probably with, a long time ago. With Paul Rudd. Familiar. Yeah, it sounds and familiar. He's, they get probation and they got to take care of one of the kids and he's going to rent fair and stuff. I think I've seen it. It's hilarious, yeah. dude. So that's how we started, right? Right. And... That didn't last very long of just haunt people. Then we started, uh, people started asking us and asking us. And then we started running out of fabric. We had to get more fabric you know, oh, because man. kilts are nine yards long. Yeah. So, and then it turned out we're the largest clan at Southern and Northern Fair. Oh, shit. At one, at one point we had, I think, 130 total members. Wow. And there was five of us of the governing body that try to sustain all that. Over <laughs> so, the, five, I mean, still, the five founding fathers. <laughs> we were called, it's funny because one of the guys, he called us the fab five, the fab five. So, and here's the kicker. All of us, all the top, all the five, uh, the five of us were all haunt. Yeah. So it was me, the green goblin and the haunt ape, not the monkey, but the ape, the ape, we all worked together. Right. And then goblin's wife. Okay. And then a makeup artist. That oh, nice. Together. So, um, yeah, it was, it was crazy. So, but it, it's all, it also sounds like a, a nice little excuse to hang out with your friends too. You yeah, know what I mean? It like it's and always a drink. thing to drink. Yeah. And just get slobber knocker. Yeah. Cause it's like a, it, it goes on for like a month, doesn't it? Month and a half. Month and a half. Yeah. Right. And, and they, that, people just show up every, yeah. People show up every weekend. Yeah. So what is it? What is there necessary to do? Like, do they do battles and whatnot? Well, or have jousts. Like you go way to the back. There's a joust. Right. There's, there's shows all over the place. A ton of food, a ton of um, ale stands. Okay. And for us, it's just... And a ton of beer. Home, you know, <laughs> beer, hard liquor, everything. Yeah. 
Well, actually, not not hard liquor really. It's beer, wine. Uh, uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but you know, it's yeah. I gotta check it out one day, one of these days, just, just to show. You know, up. the thing is too is like, yeah, it's it's Renaissance Fair, but like Fantasy Weekend, me and the Goblin and the Gargoyle. Do you ever remember the gar- Gargoyle from Ghost Town, the Big Wings? I think so. He's one of our friends too. Right. We would all dress up in our hunt crap with our clan garb. Like I, <laughs> it's I, double the trouble, man. Yeah, like he'd wear his goblin mask, and he sometimes he'd wear the whole thing, or sometimes he'd wear his goblin mask with his garb. That's great. You know, I would do the same thing. I'd wear all my garb, a kilt, and everything. I just cover my arms and hands. Just my yeah. legs would show. Yeah, and I have a my do rag on and everything with the mask. <laughs> you know, and I, I actually I wore the demon there. Okay. One time. Nice. On a very, very hot day. It was, uh, yeah, I always told myself if I was going to go to one of those things, I would probably just dress up as Deadpool. Yeah. Just troll people. Dude, I want dead, a Deadpool costume so bad. Dude. So bad. You'd, I think you'd be fit for one, honestly. Dude, that's what, that's what my roommate says, too. She says all the time. She's like, dude, that character's just, you just you. Now you just got to have, I mean, obviously you're pretty funny, so you got to have the comedic chops to, to pull off. I'm not Ryan Reynolds' comedic chops, that's for <laughs> sure. I mean, you so. could just look at, like, you could just show up to a Queen Mary Ciders event and just roast them all, and boom, you're Deadpool. I could, yeah. but they would know it's me. <laughs> like, dude, that's Deets. <laughs> you know? Or, or Paul would leave me like, this fucking guy. And I'd lose <laughs> it right there. Oh, man. Um, I have a couple other notes here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Forrest. Mr. Forrest. That guy is, dude, that guy's so animated. I loved his podcast that he did with you. Forrest. He is so funny. Is the man, dude. Yeah. He will tell it as it is. Oh, yeah, true. I that's love what it. I like about him. You know, he's, he's, he shoots from the hip. Great guy. He's got that um, immersive interactive thing going for him, which is right. awesome. You know, Let me check that. We, we um, met um, way back in the very beginning when he first started it. Right. We up and we met over at the Calder we talking, and he wanted, to, he wanted me to give him a, a layout, kind of a, a draft of what what an effective long, uh, uh, talent could do to create longevity and main, maintain, not just through the event, but years so right. I, I think it was like a two-page breakdown you know just a quick um sketch i don't know what he did with it i'm sure he implemented it in some of his stuff but i mean dude the guy's the f- one of the faces of paranormal now yeah. well, he's <laughs> like been since the beginning yeah no uh, yeah yeah and that's what that's what i first saw him in anything yeah and then my boys uh tlev had him on the show on their show and then i discovered him more there he's you go a, he's a great guy burn I the evidence huh burning the evidence huh yeah <laughs> You know, but uh, there, there's one more note on there that that'll stay in my head until we get to it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, what he, I saw him at this last year because I got I went to a lot of home haunts. I did too. They were fun. They were yeah. really creative, weren't they? Pirates Cave. Pirates Cave. Talked about that, this dude. Was great. They were I like a little bit of cash to him too. Oh, to I did help, too. You know? Yeah, I, only they, five bucks, but you know. Oh yeah, but they they're not they're a type of people that like they don't ask for it, but it's just always I always think it's a good gesture for them, you know. But it's what keeps them going. It's a th- yeah, that was a theme park level show dude yeah, theme park level front yard and i and i was and you know i was really in cahoots with them on the podcast and yeah. and i i still talk with them to this day at least jacob the the son that runs it yeah. really cool guy um those guys man they they it was just one of those things where it's like what are we gonna do this year yeah. well let's do a show let's yeah. see how hard it is and i don't know if you know this but now but on their youtube page they actually have a documentary of how they made the show no yes i haven't i haven't, I haven't crossed over the youtube page i mean there's only a few that i really watch right um, if you ever if you ever want to watch something one night and you want to see how that was made, they have a whole series. I think it's all out now of them just creating the show. That's good to know. Yeah. We're going to create a big fire right here right now. Oh, hell yeah. Not that side, though. This side first. No, I'll just break it up. There we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Pirate's Cave was great. We saw a couple of other ones, too, that were just... Uh, front things like that, no interaction, but those are great. The uh, the uh, the art displays. Yeah, um, yeah. There's there's a kid that goes to Los Alamitos High School too. Okay. That does one and oh, fuck smoke. Let me uh let me check the phone real quick. Oh yeah. Of going my way. <laughs> Make the smoke go the other way. Sort of. How long do you, uh, how, how far do Ed and Jeremy live here? 
Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. So right down the street. Right down the street. Though. Yeah. So, like we started, we started this um, Saturday dinners because of the whole pandemic. Yeah, and you know, it's like we know where each other goes, and we just needed something to where we can stay away. Oh, from. now look at that. There we go. Yeah, that's gonna burn quick though. Uh, but yeah, the home so. haunts were good though, weren't they? Huh? Though they were creative, some creative yeah. people there, dude, and good and good for them because you know. They were the ones to step it up this sh- this last year in twenty twenty. Yeah, they to, had to. The, to to really get their name out there. Yeah. Um. So that was really cool. Um. I really liked that they had the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's you probably don't know. Uh, there's a place in Paramount. Okay. It's, it's a long, an old old buddy of mine from junior high. Right. He has a house, an old school house, and it's called the Rotten Peach. Oh, nice, dude. It's a good haunt. Follow him on Instagram. It's a haunt. This guy? No, it's it's. Just decor only. Okay. This guy is fucking epic. He is like he, you know how I've done a lot of shit. This yeah. Guy, this guy's a world renowned b boy. Oh wow. His name's dude. I bet you anything. If I tell you his break dancer name, you'll know, his b boy name. You'll know who he is. What's his name? Easy Rock. I've heard the name. Dude, his real name's Jason Jeffrey, but this guy is so talented with his art, his craft. He can redo cars, bikes, motorcycles. Wow. Yeah, he builds props. Why does he have his own reality show? I don't know. Like he's got a family. Let's get that started. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because I hit him up one day, or I started following his Rotten Peach page. Five minutes after, he sends me a text, hey, what's up, Scott? <laughs> so we started talking. I said, bro, why are you not on the SoCal Haunts list? Yeah. He's like, funny you said that because I just messaged them. Nice. Go, you got to get on that list for next year. Oh, he'll, I, and, and you know what? I think he'll definitely be on it. Yeah. Because just, just look up the Rotten Peach when you can. Yeah, yeah. Instagram I'll do it after we're done with this podcast for sure. Yeah. Maybe so, I'll, I'll even if you know the season comes around, I'll even get him on the show. Yeah. Talk with I him can, and I can chat with him and yeah. see if he wants to do it. Get him on the yeah. show. Talk about us. That way we can promote his haunt a little bit too. You know, yeah. just Dude, his, get it's, more eyes going his way. You know. Did, when I say did he's you world renowned b boy like the shit he does is insane and he was. He was amazing in junior high, and he's even better now. Did you see the Grey Phantom in Norwalk? Yes. That was like literally right down the street from my mom's house. Really? <laughs> yeah. My mom lives literally right look, down the street. Where's your husband? Look at, 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 look at. He's creeping, see? <laughs> your wife is a creeper. He's got Cheerios, man. So what? I got Quaker Oats squares, bro. Huh? I got tricks and Frosted Flakes. You just did the same thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean. But he he worked at Queen, the guy who put on Grey Phantom. That's what I heard. It's I, I talked with I, him. I drove by it. I looked at it. But me and, I don't know, my friend at the time, they were kind of dating. Right. Um, we stayed in the car. Right. But Jeremy was over there. He was like, oh, you work at Queen. And they asked if the guy knew me. And he's like, the name sounds familiar, but I don't know him. Yeah, he worked at Queen. Uh, I don't remember what he did. But that guy can build. Like he intentionally had that to be a walkthrough attraction. Yeah. The Grey Go- uh, the Grey Phantom. Um, but There's with another the s- one like that too. I can't remember. Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Anna. Santa Ana. Santa Ana. Got a drawbridge in the driveway. Okay. I I'm didn't. Sure I don't think I got to. Is, I don't think I got to go to that one. Yeah. I did. Uh, the home ones I did this year was Corona Haunt. I don't know if you checked them out. They were pretty. They were a walkthrough attraction maze. Um, that was cool. Uh, uh, Drex Society was pretty cool. They were another walkthrough attraction in Ontario. Yeah, we didn't um, venture that far. Yeah, they were pretty cool. They did a whole Universal Monsters World War II theme thing. Dude, that's pitching. Yeah, they, like their whole facade was supposed to be like a, a movie theater, but yeah. in Germany, and there was bullet holes, and it was like a, supposed to be a camp for people to go and, you know, yeah. stay in, indoors and stuff. And then you go in, and then you're living through the Universal Monster films. You know, for some reason, every time I think about a cool theme for, a, for like an attraction, like a maze, which probably people go, oh, it's stupid, but have you ever seen the movie Dead Snow? I've heard of it. That's that's the one. Isn't that the the Nazi zombies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason, I think because that gets into people's psyche and really right. terrifies them. Yeah. I, I think that would be cool. You know, probably people have done it, but you know, whatever. I'm, it is what it is. I'm still waiting for Halloween 3 season of The Witch to be a maze. That could be a good one. Too. I think it could be a really good one. And from what I've heard, rumor-wise, it was that's supposed to... That's the one with the masks, right? Yeah. Silver Shamrock. Silver Shamrock. That one wasn't even anything tied into the whole Mike Myers you thing. Know, but you know why? The time John Carpenter wanted to make Halloween a anthology series. Oh. And okay. so when, when he came up with the idea for this, he actually he wanted to take Season of the Witch and just kind of give it his own. But the, the studio said, if you don't put Halloween on this movie, it's not going to succeed. The title Halloween. Yeah. 
Uh, I I disagree. I think it would have succeeded regardless because John Carpenter and he's. Dude, it was kind of gross. I didn't I didn't like it in the beginning because I was one of those fans of like the Michael Myers not even in here. Yeah. But then when you start to appreciate it as the film goes on and as to what it's it is, film, it's sure. a it's a good film, dude. Like it, it's a creepy just the, the fact of there's these people who have the biggest mask production in the world yeah. and they're selling off masks that are gonna kill kids. Yeah, and, and there's robots in it. And there's yeah. And they got yeah. robots. I mean, that's just creepy on its own right yeah. there, dude. Like, if you guys punch the guy in the gut and all of a sudden it goes through, he's got, he's got his like green goo his... coming out. Yeah. It's, I mean, so. but from what I heard, that was on the rumor mill for 2020's Halloween Horror Nights last year. So we'll see what you know happens. What's funny is, you know how you always ask the question, favorite horror film? Right. I don't know why I didn't think of it, but when you put me on the spot, I mean, first thing that came to mind was a Freddy movie and Halloween Rob Zombie version. Right. But actually, my favorite movie, Mooch and I have the same thing in common with that. The Shining? My, yeah, that is by far my favorite quote-unquote horror movie even though it's more psychological did you watch dr sleep no check it out okay it's a very good i think, I think that's think, on my on my buddy's plex too so. i think it's a good sequel to dr strange because not only does it honor the books to dr strange or dr strange i'm sorry the shining the shining i don't know what because dr sleep what are you thinking mcu bro because i just got done watching freaking wandavision and they just gave they gave the okay for movie theaters to open this saturday Such a badass fucking ending great love- show right Dude, I love. We're getting off tangent again, but I, it's I shoot love the shit. Scarlet Witch. <laughs> yeah, her costume looks awesome. Phenomenal. I don't care what anybody else says. I think more people were mad at that finale because of everybody was expecting Mephisto. They were expecting all these cameos and they didn't deliver. It's it's a build. That's the thing. It's yeah. If people don't understand, I don't even understand it that much, but I do understand that that all ties into the MCU overall. Like that happened right after you know the timeline after Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited. She made that world because of her pain. Yeah. You know? So I I loved it. it. Every week it was having me ask questions like, "What the hell's going on?" The first two episodes were slow as fuck. They were, but then I knew when after the the when I got more explanation, like, "Oh, the fourth episode is going to explain a lot." I'm yeah. like, "Okay, so by the third episode, we should get some controversy, which will lead into four. Yeah. And you it, know the thing is exactly too. Big. Connor, Rissy's husband. Right. He is a big MCU guy, so if I have questions, I can ask him, and he knows. Yeah. He knows all of it. I love I love comment. I'm more. I I'm I would say I'm like fifty nine or fifty one forty nine of DC. I like DC more than Marvel. But Same I characters or just as a, as a whole. I think. Well, I, I'm a huge Batman fan. So there you go. So my dad's and my dad's a huge Superman fan. So okay, I grew, yeah. I grew up with DC. Yeah. But my dad also loves Marvel. I mean, he loves superheroes. He loves yeah. giant monsters. You know, he's he's the reason why I love sci fi. Zero. He, he loves God. He's seen every Godzilla film. Wow. He loves Godzilla. He's ex- super excited for this next one to come out. That's pretty good, dude. And I told him, I was like, it's perfect timing because now the movie theaters are open. We can go see it in theaters. Yeah, that's good. So. I'm throwing this big log on here, dude. All right. Oh, but nonetheless, I think uh, you got to watch Dr. Sleep. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind. It's a good sequel to not only the book. Uh, it, it stays true to the book. And it also is a good sequel for uh, Dina Manolo, just died on the podcast, by the way. Yeah, I almost smashed my foot just now. <laughs> uh, it's a good uh, sequel to the book, and it's a good sequel to the Stanley Kubrick's film. Okay, good. It's so, good to know, so I'll watch And Ewan that. McGregor's in it. Freaking okay. Obi-Wan Kenobi, dude. Yeah. Guy's a freaking great actor. Okay, since we're talking about movies, have you? Seen, please tell me you've seen Split. Yeah. Seen Dan Split, McAvoy? Unbreakable, Glass. Dude, McAvoy... Dude, he is amazing in that movie. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah, he's so good in that movie. I'm hoping that they actually do bring him into the MCU as Professor X. I really liked him as Professor X. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, and I liked, uh, whatchamacallit, as Magneto as well. Oh, Michael Fassbender. Fassbender? He yeah. was a great Magneto, dude. His monologues and everything. You know he was in 300, right? Yeah. He had a small role, but he was in 300, yeah. 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 He so. actually, he was in the sequel, too, for like a little bit as well. The Rise of the Empire, yeah, which was, was a pre-sequel. I was a fan of that. I was not a fan. I wasn't a fan of it because Snyder didn't do it. I was just like... Ugh. I'm a big Snyder fan, and Snyder gets a lot of shit, but... Well, it's been fun. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. No. Okay. Another thing, the other note that I had. <laughs> he just shut me down on my own show. We're not done yet. All right. right. Let's go. Tunnel of Terror. Did you work it? I did. Were you there the Jan, night I was there? Jan t- touched on it. I was there on Halloween. I wasn't there then. Yeah. I was there the, the, forest, the night forest there. Uh, what you call was there too, Sinatra. Yeah, he told he me about that. I think he touched on that in the yeah, podcast. Have, yeah. yeah, like we went down to check it out, and well, Glow was one yeah. of the managers there. Yeah, she, she 
basically spearheaded the whole thing and right. told the owners. Because hey, I noticed a lot of – there was not a lot – there was a lot of Knotts talent that showed up. Yeah. So, I mean, working out was fun. Uh, being able to – Were you inside the car wash or no, were you outside? I worked the line. I was crawling inside cars, dude. <laughs> like, parents were – like, their kids were freaking out. The kids were locking the doors and the parents were unlocking them and I was crawling in. Kids were crawling over the back seat to get away from me and I was reaching for them, sitting in the, in the uh, back seat and then they're on the – very back seat. Yeah, yeah. And the parents were laughing. Dude, I, I just have to say, when I first heard of this concept of a drive through haunted car wash, I was like, this is probably the stupidest idea I've ever heard. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I, and I said that because I was like, this character's going to be all fucking wet by the time it's done. If they're working inside the tunnel, how are they going to? Yeah. But then I went through it. And I was like, holy shit, this is the most genius concept I've ever seen in my That's life. Great. They were supposed to do one for, for Valentine's Day. It got rained out, though, yeah. that weekend. So it was kind of a bummer. Like, oh, From what ahead. I hear, they want to start early this season for... That, that was their, I guess, what they when they announced it for next season. Yeah. For their Tunnel of Terror this year is they want to start as early as August. Yeah. To get it going. That way they have more dates for people to go see it. Yeah. But yeah, me and Rob and uh, his wife got to go see it. They made Rob get out and clean the car. <laughs> I got a chainsaw to the face. Um, and Forrest was working that night, so he fucked us a little bit, and he was funny. Um, one of the funniest things he did was uh, he actually – she locked the car – incognito like making sure she didn't see it and he heard it and he's like oh i know you just didn't do that and he reached over unlocked the car and got in <laughs> he, he was there the night i worked too was he yeah. he worked a couple nights then yeah yeah so he, my guys i asked my guys hey you guys working this night no we got other plans I'm like Pff. it was a fun time you would you yeah. do it again yeah yeah i mean i i, I wanted to help glow out because she was short staffed right so, you know and making a little extra money on the side too is great yeah. You know, but, you know, and, and Glow's, a, a, she's a, a, an old friend of mine. I want to get her on the show. You know, she. Sammy wants to, she would be that's one of Sammy's favorite uh, characters at Knott's. He loves, that's the one character that I think that creeps him out the most. Dude, her, her progression through the event as talent is, is yeah, she's is a, epic, she's a very talented person. Yeah. Um, and, and she pulls off that bride character. Like nobody else, you know what I mean? Like that was a good pass of the torch right there. Yeah. Like she the was the choice. Thing is, I didn't know she wanted to do it until much later, like until auditions that year. Right. And then and um it was funny because my first choice at the time was Haley. Mm-hmm. And who like Haley like she gave me the chills, like li- literally because her hands are cold all the time. Right. She put her hands on my neck from behind and it gave me the chills. <sighs> she was great. Um but then, you know, that was my first choice, but Lord is a step above for that right. character, so I took that. Haley was upset, but when we repositioned her into um, Hollows, mm-hmm. as one of the witches there, right? you know, I explained to her, I go, look, this role, we put you here because it's the next best role for you, and I know you're going to kill it. You know, she was very upset, and then as she started progressing, I go, I, I think I talked about halfway through, I go, what did I tell you? I don't say things just to say things. I said it because I know what you're capable of. Right. You know, this is a better fit role than the other one. The other one just there's somebody better. Tunnel of terror, man. I mean, you know, yeah. I had, I, I mean, like I said, I had a lot of fun this on season, but I would say, and this is honestly, this is something to say. I was, this was the most exhausting season I've ever had going, because, you know, I'm used to going 10 minutes up to five to knots. Yeah about an hour up the freeway to universal like i every weekend i had them two to go to this week or this last year every weekend and every day of the weekend it was something new and it was just kind of exhausting to drive but it was worth it so you take that okay i'm gonna just put a little bit of perspective for you yeah you take that your exhaustion for that event multiply times three or four okay yeah that's what i go through every year Man. And that's without a and that's without a, a second job, right. a day job. Like when when you throw a day job in the mix, oh my god, it's even worse. I got a uh, yeah. No, I know that for a fact because I'd get home at like two or three in the morning and then I have to get up for work at like five thirty. So yeah. get like three hours of sleep if I'm lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my next focus, honestly, is I would like to do a lot more coverage from Queen Mary. Uh, I felt like with Knots, uh, we we've done some good coverage there, but uh, and we've been there a lot. But I want to go to Queen Mary more because I like the people, I like the event, and if I can do anything else in my power to give them free advertisement, yeah, I'll do it. 
Yeah. Because and if we can build a, a solid relationship with one another, I'm game. Yeah. I'm I'm just there to promote your event and have a good time. Just who knows what's going to happen in the near future. I'm hoping. Now. I'm hoping Dark Harbor will land on its feet. Um, I hope so too. I got I got big high hopes for it. I'm hoping someone's going to come in and buy that boat. Yeah. And it needs a lot of repairs. If I had the money, I would do it. Dude. And I would make Dark Harbor my biggest focus. Millions <laughs> upon millions of dollars. I think the last article I read, um, just the core, like the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The repairs that needed to be done. Don't quote me on the number. I think it was $28 million. $28 million. Yeah, huh? just for the repairs that needed to be done. Well, it's because it's starting to rot on the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's been sitting there for yeah, so forever. Yeah, forever. The hole's all... Out. 28 million on top of purchasing the damn thing. Yeah, and I think overall, like repairs to make it completely like 100% good to go again, I think it was over 100 something million. Don't quote me on that. I just, these are the things I'm kind of recommending. The number's about. high. Let's yeah, just put it that. It's extremely yeah. high. Like, you know, millions so. upon millions upon millions of dollars. You know, it's a, it's a historic landmark. So it's, it's tough to, to, uh, you know, to it's a World War II stations. shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it goes. It goes back. My grandpa and the old freaking uh, the old bar they used to have it carved his name in there. I don't yeah. know what they've done with that bar since, but yeah, who knows? I well, hope they. I I've hope they've kept it because yeah. that's that's historical alone. All those soldiers tagging their names on that. Yeah, I mean, I would hope they would have kept it. God rest his soul, man. That guy had some good World War II stories. <laughs> I would yeah. get him on a shoot the shit just to talk World War II, man. Oh, I, know. I wonder how many people would watch that video. You know, it's funny. as a lot of the stuff we talked about. I mean, majority of it was haunt, but. A lot of it was not. Oh, yeah. That's shoot the shit's about. Yeah. yeah, we talked about Haunt, but it's just catching up and just getting yeah, to know I one mean, another. That's, that's the thing. It's like Haunt's the main focus, but it's not what well, it's not work an event is all about. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like with this, it's like, okay, yeah, we can always talk about. And that's the thing about off season. It's like I can talk about Haunt for so long, but then you eventually got to move on because you can't talk about. I can't keep speculating Queen Mary every month. Yeah. Because I don't know what's going to happen, especially with Queen Mary Knots, all these events that do original mazes. You can't speculate those. Yeah, you can't. Horror Nights is probably the only one you could speculate at this point because they do all mostly IPs. Yeah. That's the only thing you could speculate. But like with Knots, I mean, you, you can't really tell where it's going to go be until it gets closer. Yeah. And so I'm just I'm just kind of patiently waiting, man. I mean, me and you have talked about doing a sit down podcast, and I know before we went on, we we're like we should have just done it on Zoom. But I'm actually really glad we did it in person because I feel like yeah. Well, I just, wanted to give you an you know whatever options you wanted, something a little bit different. Yeah. Thought, like, like oh, we could use the fire pit. Mind you, I haven't used it in months, so I mean it was a good to opportunity to get it going again to fire it up and you know have a reason to sit around here because I usually burn it during parties and stuff. Right. Stop staring at me. <laughs> um yeah you know it, just to fire it up and sit around it for parties i usually have it fired up you know there, it, there is a gas line too but i never use it because it doesn't burn very big right so i just throw uh, wood in it i mean I, I i really this was something after about a year of not doing a lot of guest things this you're the first one back man and like i said like i said in the beginning of the show man it's gonna be a good year 2021 is looking a lot more heavy. Yeah. And, uh, I so because then I can start maybe doing maneuvering, some maneuvering with the business. Now, are you planning on. She's going to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Well, well we're going to end it right now. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, are you planning on getting. I'm, I'm just curious. Are you planning on getting vaccinated? Are yeah. you. Yeah. When the time comes, my parents right. are vaccinated. Uh, both my brother and his wife, too. My brother's frontline. Right. Uh, my, my, his, my wife. His wife is, um, she works closely with people up in Big Bear because right. she works for one of the mountains again. Right. It's so funny, full circle. Like, she worked there back before they got married, and now she's working there again. Again. And both of my nephews go up there with her on nice. occasion, you know, and they're ski kids. Right. You know, we're not. Uh, I'm not. I'm the only one in the family that snowboards. Snowboards. <laughs> you know, my brother does it. But he's he's a two planker. I always say that I'm, I, he's a two planker. I'm a knuckle dragger. You know, and, and that's they, just uh, the way it goes. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I'm getting mine on the 24th of this month, March. Oh, good. Yeah, because uh, since I work in in schools, yeah, I, I'm okay to get it. Um, yeah, especially because I'm a custodian too. I'm constantly disinfecting and yeah. So I'm just I want to get it because uh, the way I look at it. If they're gonna require it to go places, and if this opens up the world faster, yeah, let's do it. It's it's up to the individual, you know. And listen, has if, a choice to do it. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, don't. That's cool. 
Worst case scenario, it kills me. I had a good life. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like you know what? If it's my time, it's my time. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I have a lot of faith they won't do that. I just hope that when my time comes, I would have done enough in my life to be like, you know, and I. I, I think lived, you're already, I full, but I, I did everything I wanted to do. You did a lot. You know? You've done a lot thus Bunch far. But, oh my god, you're crazy. <laughs> For that's my where, I, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> It was off a crane though. It wasn't over. Well, it doesn't matter. A crane or over. A, That's fucking high as shit still. <laughs> yeah, over or off a bridge. It doesn't matter. Like you hit the, it, so, it was the the, the the catch net looked this big. You've done know. you've done bungee jumping now. I'm assuming you would parachute too if you. I have never skydived. Would you do it? I thought about it, but I don't know. The Green Goblin used to be an avid skydiver. He's got hundreds I, I of jumps under his belt. Parachuting is way more dangerous than skydiving though. What do you mean parachuting? I thought you it's the same thing. Or parachuting parachuting way more dangerous than bungee jumping but are you, i mean like it's like where you tagline you jump out of a plane and it automatically opens and you parachute down to the ground not immediately opens but you get a little air for a little bit it's and then skydiving. yeah yeah i don't know that's kind of scary you think it's scary yeah. even if you have someone with you yeah well you mean like a, where you obviously have the instructor I yeah don't know, maybe i'm gonna sign you up for a class it's weird because it's weird because when's you know, your you birthday think about that i'm not telling you <laughs> i'll find it out from the queen mary people you probably will <laughs> Um, I could just go on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you could. Um, it's weird, though, because, like, you know, you think of that, right? And right. Mind you, it's thousands of feet in the air. Oh, like, yeah. When I was in my prime, when I was snowboarding, I was hitting jumps that were, like, 60, 70 feet. Right. You know, and that was, like, second nature to me. You know, but that was back then. It's like, okay, I got to do this if I'm going to go anywhere competing. Mm-hmm. You know, and I did have a, a goal. I know we keep backtracking, but. No, that's all good. I did have a goal. Like, once I got to a certain point, I said, okay, I'm going to give myself three years to go pro status. Right. And it never happened. Because once I set that in my mind, I kept getting hurt. <laughs> Constantly, dude. Two, two broken feet. Dude. Fuck. Separated shoulder twice. You know? And that was, dude. The you, don't have, you don't have a little fun unless you break a little bones. Dude. Cracked ribs. The most of a bone I've broken is an ankle. Huh. Yeah, you split open an eyebrow once. Yeah, I did that right here too, just a, a couple of weeks ago. But that was nothing doing that stuff. I was trying to I, uh, my garage door <laughs> opener, and this stupid control arm swung down and hit me in the face. We have old man Logan now. We have old man Dieterman. Yep. There you go, dude. I'm. That's what everybody says. I am old man. Old man Dieterman, man. But I'm 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 comparing you to Wolverine, dog. <laughs> that guy that guy doesn't ever age because he's got adamantium, dude. I don't know. Did you watch Logan? He dies because he gets old. Yeah. Or, or did I watch that? I don't think so. Oh, well, I might have. I just spoiled it for you. So I, just, dude, I don't care about the spoiler thing because I'll still watch the movie anyway. He uh, dies from his animanium sickness. Oh, so he got ends up poisoning. ends up killing him because oh, cool. it's from a meteor from outer space. It's yeah. a rare metal. So yeah, it, was, it is what it is. You know, you yeah. die. Got yeah, to a I point see. where he'd have all his claws come out, and then this one would be like halfway. So he had to pull it with his hand, and it's like, oh, eat see all the scars now it, like when he would heal he would not leave a scar now you start seeing scars on him and stuff because his healing healing is going yeah, out too. Thing is going too killing him yeah slowly cancer pretty yeah, much cancer. it's pretty much it's pretty much kind of a, a thing for cancer like the the healing his healing was keeping him from getting killed from the animantium yeah. and eventually he just finally gave up and the animantium was starting to take over and kill him yeah he's like okay i'm done, done. he lived a healthy life yeah man <laughs> so yeah, I just hope I, like I said, you know, I died doing something I love to do, or... Do you want to film your last will and testimony right here for the future? <laughs> we'll do that on another You know what's day. funny is I keep looking at where the camera was. Like I know, it's on the floor you now. Know, your phone is down below. I should be looking down, not over it. It's okay. The light, you could just say the light was blinding your eyes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, the light was blinding my eyes. You know, he just said that. <laughs> it's the magical power of editing. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Which, this is going to be edited to hell because... I can't. Two hour podcast. Is it two hours? Two hours. Oh shit! But there's, I mean, I mean, there's, covered, there's some, in, there's some in between stuff I cut out, so it'll probably come down to like hour forty five, hour thirty. Yeah, a lot of shit. Well, you, I bet you didn't think that I had all this other shit going on, huh? I knew you had a lot because <laughs> you told me you, you told me I can do podcasts and talk about things for days, and I was like, okay. 
I didn't know we were going to go this long, but I'm glad we did. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun, dude. Yeah. It's fun to do. I my, So my plan is, and tell me if you're on board with this, when it gets a little bit better, um, obviously it's easier to do one-on-one right now. Yeah. But let's say summertime, maybe let's say we're back on track. We're allowed. We're all vaccinated, maybe. We all are okay. Let's do a, a group one. You sliders. Good luck with that. A Jersey Shore type thing. <laughs> you know how, okay, you want to do that in person? I want to do that in person. You know how hard that is going to be? Why? One, getting everyone in the same schedule, that would be the easy part, but keeping everybody from stepping on each other and talking over each other is going I'm going to go full-blown production on this one, dude. I'm going to have camera people. I'll have Rob come down. I'll have anyone else who's willing to camera for me. Um, like, you'll see me sitting in the back behind everybody just shaking my head i could probably get another one of these not paid for but i can borrow it from a friend yeah so we'll all have great audio we'll we'll, we'll, we'll set up oh something God. i don't know where we'll be but we'll set up somewhere yeah um are you down yeah are you down i'm down to do it dude i mean it's, it's gonna be a cluster but it'll be fun yeah i mean dude with the whole with that with that squad oh good god oh i know it's gonna be uh, i play xbox with them all the time yeah so you know so you should jump on an xbox I don't have an Xbox. I don't. I'm not a gamer, dude. I'll get you an Xbox. Then I'll, what? I'll, I'll throw it out the window. <laughs> play play Wars. Play one game of Warzone with no. us. <laughs> one game. No. One game. I'll Here just we. shoot everybody. And it's like okay, I win. I'm going home now. Well, that's the point of the game. Shoot everybody. No, I'd shoot you guys. <laughs> you wouldn't kill us because there's no fire in the fire, so you're good. Oh fuck. There's <laughs> no fun in that. Then. <laughs> Unless we play uh, hardcore search and destroy, then you can kill us all. But then you probably get kicked from the no, game. No, seriously. I'm, I mean. You more like? Are you more like the Galaga era of video games? Yeah, I'm old school. Like, dude, I respect freaking, it because I love Galaga. Dude, Dig Dug, Dig Dug, I love Dig Phoenix, Dug. Phoenix, our type. You know they sell the little pop up. Yeah. Dude, Ed and Jeremy have a little pop up one. Like, just uh, go over and play Street Fighter and shit. That's what's a little up. tiny one. I've played it probably about six times, and it hasn't been turned on since the last time I played. We need it, to do uh, me, you, Ed, and Jeremy need to go to Nickel Nickel. Where's the Nickel Nickel? It's open. Well, when they open. But where is there one near here? There's got to be. There's still. There's got to be. No, there's one in. Uh, there used to be one off a of beach and. Um, yeah, there's one over Chapman. there. Oh, fuck. There's one around here. I know that for a fact. Okay. Unless they went out of business during COVID. Yeah. Which, it would suck else. if they did. Yeah. I mean, but nickel, nickel, dude. We just go play the free games. <laughs> dude, have you ever been to out there in Banning the um, pinball arcade? Uh, it's all pinball machines. It's there's a whole fucking wing of pinball machines. A bunch of different themes and, and whatnot. And the other wing is all games from my childhood. Dude, we gotta go. Dude, it, it's well, it's once a year. It's like a convention type of thing. Oh, okay. You go in, you pay, you go, and you can play all the games for free. Flynn's Arcade, man, Tron. Yep. <laughs> Discotron. Tron, dude, it was yeah. great, right? Dude, do you remember? See, we're gonna, dude. This is the thing. You're gonna have to. Cut you want to just shit let's out. just end it. let's end it now, and then we'll talk after. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for being the first guest back. Appreciate it. Yeah. Adios. Adios, amigos. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be where every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And we will see you guys next time for another podcast and or video. You're going to need to fast forward through a lot of this stuff because you're going to get bored. <laughs>